Some of those in this crowd of over 90,000 may say the Seattle Seahawks brought their weather with them. It is cloudy, foggy temperature in the 60s for this championship game. A huge throng at the Coliseum. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olsen. Our congratulations to Joe Gibbs, Washington Redskins. They've earned the right to defend their Super Bowl championship. Will it be Seattle? Will it be the Raiders? You've been on the field for a championship game. What are the feelings now? Feelings running high. They're hot down there to get this kick get it off and get it running. I'll tell you, there's only one spot left in the Super Bowl. You dream about that. You start your ear thinking about it, and here they are waiting to battle it out. Well, the surprising member brought to this ball, Chuck Knox, Seattle Seahawks. And Chuck Knox kind of likes the idea that his team is a solid underdog again. We really don't mind the underdog role because it gives us a chance to prove that people can be wrong. <laughs> You played for him. I played for five different coaches, head coaches. He was my favorite. Look you in the eye, and boy, can he get you ready to play. Well, they say the same good things about Tom Flores, the head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders. Tongue-in-cheek, we asked him about the pressure that he feels coming into this game, and he related the fact that he said, well, just about everything. Respect, players, bonuses, prestige, Super Bowl, my wife's favor, maybe even my job. Pressure, what do you mean? He's 6-1 and one in playoffs, and he has the better team. He knows it, but they've got to prove it here today. Let's talk about the personality of the Los Angeles Raiders. Uh, intimidating is one of the first words that come out. Power and pressure are two other very important words. That's the kind of thing they would like to do to the Seahawks today. And the thing that they will do that with is a very strong defense and a multitude of offensive tools. No question but what the Raiders, and I think the consensus is that they have the most talent in the league. And they have two players that weren't around when they played Seattle the two times Seattle beat them. In Mike Haynes, Cliff Branch. Haynes, of course, Boys up that defensive secondary, and Branch is their deep threat. They were not available when Seattle upset the Raiders during the regular season on both occasions. Now let's talk about the character of the Seattle Seahawks and the fact that they really forced the ball to be left on the ground. They made the mis forced the mistakes and made advantage of those. They really are the people who make that happen. They knock it down. They they take the fumble away from you. They take the interception. And look how the Raiders have helped in those losses. They've given the ball away 23 times. They've only taken away three times in those four losses during the season. Well, we're ready to kick it off. The Seattle Seahawks will receive to open this championship game. The winner will meet the Washington Redskins in the Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. Chris Barr getting ready. This crowd on its feet. One of the largest in Coliseum history. Over 90,000. 92,000 tickets have been sold. Zachary Dixon, a very dangerous return man. They'll try to keep the ball away from him. Bar signals were ready. The championship is underway. away from Dixon and Hughes gives Seattle good field position here the starting offense for the upstart Seahawks Dave Craig their unknown quarterback they know him now in the great Northwest Kurt Warner rookie Penn State Cullen Bryant blocking back he played here with the Rams Paul Johns dangerous deep receiver and the clever Steve Largent he had 11 touchdown catches this year second only to Todd Christensen of the Raiders who had a dozen First down for Craig and Seattle at the 40-yard line. Warner, no surprise there. He gets about four before Bob Nelson, one of the inside linebackers, can make the tackle. On the front wall for Seattle, the Reverend Charlie Young, he's trying to get into the third Super Bowl with three different teams. Ron Essink. He's had a fine year. Edwin Bailey for the injured Reggie McKenzie. Blair Bush, the former Cincinnati Bengal. Robert Pratt, the ex-Baltimore Colt. And Steve August. He was part of that Dorset trade of a few years ago. Second down and six. Warner. He can't get outside. Alzado and Martin teamed up on that defensive right side. It'll be third down and about four. Let's check the defense. And the Raiders are tough up front. Howie Long on his way to the Pro Bowl. Reggie Kinlaw on the nose from Oklahoma. And the veteran Lyle Alzado. Darth Raider, they call him. Ted Hendricks, all pro again. 
Matt Millen, one of the top tacklers in the league, Bob Nelson, who just made that last stop. Rod Martin voted the AFC Player of the Year on defense. Lester Hayes, touchdown last week. Mike Haynes at the other corner. Mike Davis at safety. And the second-year man, Van McElroy, on his way to the Pro Bowl. Out of the shotgun, third and five. That's Dornick in motion. They like to go to him. Down the middle, it's going to be intercepted by Lester Hayes at the 31-yard line. A flag is down. Hayes, the man who intercepted early against Pittsburgh last week for a touchdown. And we have some pushing and shoving at the other end. Well, the Raiders like to do that. That's part of their game plan. They like to intimidate. Dick, they'd like to get your mind off the game and onto the rowdiness and the fighting on the field. That was Crack Pickell fighting. It's going to be a reception. It looked like they tagged Lester Hayes for pushing in the secondary. He was there ahead of the receiver. Can't do it that way. Number 37. Interference, number 37. To Seattle instead of the ball. Lester Hayes gives it up to Seattle on the interference. Look at that classic stance. Hayes says, come and get it. I got it right here. Byron Walker working one-on-one. -on -one. Now there's the bump. He cannot push him in past that five-yard area. Hayes dropping the shoulder into him and pushing him away. Another look at it from a different angle as you watch Craig get rid of the football. And, of course, Lester is there, but the official behind him took out the yellow flag and nullified the play. And instead of the turnover, first down at the 32, Warner. Mike Haynes has showed why he is such a great addition to this team. He's terrific on coverage and look at him meet the run and the key to this ball game is what the Raiders have done so far they have been able to hammer on on that big back Warner now Warner is the key to this offense Dick he's the key to this offense they got to have his running production and here's a quote for Ted Hendricks they know it it's not complicated we've got to stop Kurt Warner if they stop Warner then they can apply the full pressure of that defense to the passing game Boy, that's awesome. You don't want to play catch-up football against this team. Now with 57 sacks, second best in the NFL. Second and 10. Craig. Oh, there's a fumble. You'll hear a roar if it's for the Raiders. Still no notice from the officials. Seattle maintains, so already the ball has bounced right twice for this young Seattle team against Tom Flores Raiders. But that's exactly what we talked about. On a must-pass situation, look at the kind of pressure they get on Craig. Craig from the blind side will not see the defender coming. Right here, Rod Martin, number 53, and Martin slapped that ball away, knocked it loose. Pratt had a chance at it. A couple of Raiders had a chance at it. Essink, I think, the man that finally came up with the football. Eight-yard loss to Seattle. Back to the 40-yard line. That probably takes them out of field goal range, although Johnson has a 54-yarder this season. So shotgun time. Third down and 18. Craig. Complete to Larson at the 30, but that's short of the first down. Mike Davis made the tackle. Let's see if that's enough to get Norm Johnson on the field. And now we have some more push and shove. Boy, they are ready emotionally, both sides. Maybe too ready. We talked about emotion being the key. What had happened is Dornick came in, lost his balance, jumped over the pile, and I think stepped on Mike Davis at the end of that play. Davis came up off the ground, and he went right after Dornick. Here's the play. Craig's throw a little low, so Larkin, after he made the reception, that's all he could get. Another different angle on that last play as you watch the finale of the play. Now, there's Dornick coming over the top, and you saw him trying to catch his balance. I think Davis read that as an attempt to go after his head, and he came up looking for Dornick. Well, apparently they called that pass not complete, but trapped. So in the punt is Jeff West. The ball was trapped. Greg Pruitt, deep back at the 10-yard line. They go after West, and that's going to be a penalty. They really nailed West. So the ball goes into the end zone. 
Let's see how the call goes on roughing the kicker or running into the kicker. I think it'll be a roughing call. He really, Otis McKinney, 23, really came in there. Now, if he can touch that football, he can go into that kicker. He can't do it otherwise, and he had no chance at that football. Took a bad angle coming in. Just leveled Jeff West, and Jeff will trade his body for that play. There it is right there. Oh. One question, did Dornick push him in? Dornick back there getting a shove on him. Look at it from the other angle. That's that's Brown, Dave Brown, 22. But number 23, Otis McKinney, makes no attempt to avoid the kicker. And I think that's what they're going to ticket him for. Only five yards on the penalty, but more importantly, a first down to Seattle. So that's three plays already in this first quarter that have all gone to the Seattle side. It's been that kind of year for the Seahawks. They wouldn't be here otherwise. There's some magic brewing in the Northwest. Let's see if they capitalize. Lester's not afraid to gamble. He did it last week, came up with a big early exception last week, and here he is again, looking from the opposite side of the field, Craig pulling the trigger, not a good throw. Largent doesn't have a chance, but watch Cullen Bryant, a big 230-pound fullback, getting all the way across the field and making the saving tackle. We have our first time out, Raiders in scoring position. The pro bowler Lester Hayes, just as he did last week, one interception taken away, but not that when he returns at 44 yards. Watch 32, Cullen Bryant. This is a desirous play by the 236-pound fullback, and he almost forces the turnover back as Hayes was having trouble controlling the ball, as you can see. Jack, that's one thing that Seattle has not done. They've only turned the ball over once in the last three weeks, and that in the last part of that Miami game. But Craig pulled the trigger the wrong place on that one and got the ball to the open or to the Los Angeles Raiders. 27 yard line, the give to Marcus Allen. He gains about three. Keith Butler, one of the inside linebackers, made the hit. Defensively or offensively first, let's check it. Jim Plunkett, he says he's had one of his best years. Marcus Allen, over 1,000 yards. Kenny King, a big touchdown on a reverse last week. Cliff Branch, leading receiver in playoffs and yardage. Malcolm Barnwell, the other wide out. Todd Christensen led the league with 92 catches at tight end. We'll check the offensive line for you after this play. You can't blame him for smiling. <laughs> he was swallowing the canary on that smile. Second and seven. Allen on a draw. He's got a first down. He's to the five-yard line. Kenny Easley made the tackle. Two men who played against each other in college on this same Coliseum field. Allen at USC and Easley at UCLA. Seattle defense has given up a lot of yardage over this season, and they've given up a lot of yardage in the playoffs. Allen taking advantage of an opening there, showing you his tremendous skill as an open field runner. The pressure squarely on the defense. They need to try and get a turnover. They've done it well in the past. First and goal, Allen. Hit in the backfield, Jacob Green. First round pick from Texas A&M, led the Seahawks with 16 sacks this year. Bruce Davis, UCLA at left tackle. Charlie Hanna from Alabama at left guard. The center, Dave Dolby, UCLA. Right guard, Mickey Marvin from Tennessee. Henry Lawrence, Florida A&M, on his way to the Pro Bowl at right tackle. Nice battle out there between Lawrence and Green. Jacob Green has four and a half sacks off Lawrence this year. They're going at it tooth and nail already. Second and goal. Allen. To the three-yard line, Joe Nash, number 72. He's the man who chased him down from behind on that longer run. Nash, who has beaten out Tuyasa Sopo at nose tackle, made the stop. There's the defense. Green, Nash, and Jeff Bryant. The front three, the linebackers, young and mobile. Bruce Schultz led the team in tackles. Sheldon Robinson had two touchdowns against the Raiders on fumbles this year. Butler and Greg Gaines has moved into the starting lineup. Kerry Justin on one corner, veteran Dave Brown at the other. Kenny Easley and John Harris are the safeties. It's third and goal at the three. 
Allen has carried the ball on every play for the Raiders. Plunkett. And he throws it away. Big Bruce Schultz. He's built like Ted Hendricks. Had Christensen well blanketed. Some of you at home might be wondering why they didn't call face masking, face guarding. If only one hand is up and it's not waving, they will not call you for face guarding the receiver. That ball overthrown. Schultz had done a good job of covering the receiver in the far end of the end zone. There it is right there. You see the one arm up, and he's not waving that arm, and Christensen knows he has no chance on that football. Plunkett wisely throwing it over his head. Chris Barr enjoyed his best pro year in this his eighth season. This will be a 20-yard attempt. And the Raiders use Lester Hayes' interception to take the early lead 3-0 on the Chris Barr field goal. So, timeout here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, 8.47 remaining in the first quarter. Head coaches get the credit, but the strategists are often in the assistant coaching core. Ray Prohaska, offensive coordinator, and he'll be he'll be setting up the offense on his side. On the other side, Charlie Sumner. Now, they don't have a defensive coordinator, but he's the man that calls the defenses for that Raider defense. Ball's in the air. Chris Barr, again, kicking away from Dixon. David Hughes. 20. And is out to the 27-yard line. Hughes, powerful back. Did his playing in college at Boise State. He's a native of Honolulu. So the Seahawks dodged part of the bullet. They didn't give up the touchdown. Hayes, it looked like he might score Merlin, and then they had a chance first and goal and had to settle for three points, did the Raiders. Kenny Myers, who calls a lot of the plays for this Seahawk <laughs> offense, though, talked about the importance of getting off fast. They need a good start in this game. They don't want to get down to these Raiders. You can't really play good catch-up football against a team with a rush and with a good man-to-man -man coverage system. Largent to the right. They go with two tight ends, and they're both to the left. Metzler and Charlie Young. Bryant. Kurt Warner slamming behind Bryant's block out across the 30-yard line. Ken Law first to make contact for the Raiders. Talked to Matt Millen about Warner, and he said that one of the big problems that the Raiders had with Warner, and Warner played well against them early, was that they were not able to, to keep everybody, keep all the holes covered on him. He cuts back so well, has such great vision, but they have done a good job today of having a lot of bodies in those holes where Warner has wanted to run. He's not been able to break a big run yet. That yardage, over 1,400, led the AFC. This is David Hughes. Oh, he's got strong legs and carries Alzado a couple yards with him as well as Rod Martin, 53, Haynes, 22. It is short of the first down at the 35-yard line. It'll bring up third and about two. These are pleasant downs for an offensive coordinator, for a quarterback, because with a short yardage situation on third down, the defense must respect the possibility of the run. On third and seven, they can tee it up and go after the passer. The Coliseum, so much history, football, the Olympics in 32, the Olympics again in 84, jammed to capacity on a foggy Los Angeles day. It's third and about one and a half. Warner, close to a first down on second effort. Alcedo finally cut off the pursuit there and cut down the inside angle. And we'll see if it's a first down. Warner again showing you how he finds the daylight. He really runs behind the blocks without knowing exactly where he's going to go. The block's telling. Matt talked about the kind of blocking that they use in that offense of the Seattle Seahawks. He said they're a push and position team. Now, what he's saying really is they lock up one-on-one -on, -one on you, and they try to get you to commit one way or the other. And Warner is so good at seeing those holes that he cuts them into the open territory. First down on the legs of Warner. Uh, they had other things to say about Kurt Warner did these Raiders during the course of the week. <laughs> they certainly did. While Alzado used different terminology to describe his talent. Tom Flory, 6-1 and one on the playoffs. Chuck Knox, three different teams to the playoff. Knox, by the way, the only one of the three coaches to make the finals who hasn't gone to a Super Bowl. gain made 
maybe a yard. Ted Hendricks finally made the tackle. Warner forced wide and now has only 11 yards and five carries. Dick, every man on a defensive team has specific responsibility. Ted Hendricks' job is to string it out on the outside, and you saw him doing exactly that, stretching out to the outside here. Now, from the inside, you're getting pursuit from 55 Millen. And coming from the inside out now with another angle, you'll see Millen driving inside out, Hendricks, in Hendricks stringing out the play. Hendricks actually makes this play because you can't get away from those long arms of his. There's no angle in which to block him. Quick hitter by Warner again, and nothing much there. A couple of yards. Howie Long from Villanova. 13 sacks to lead the Raiders this year. Earned the right to go to the Pro Bowl. Made the stop. Warner looking for some cutbacks, and the Raiders have done a good job of shutting off the backside on the inside. 62 Kinlaw and 55 Millen. Millen locked up. There's that kind of lockup. He talked about position and push. He actually beat the block, but Warner able to dart inside. You also get a little feeling of the conservative nature of Knox. He would rather run the football. If they can establish the run, you'll see a lot of that here. That's what he's hoping to do. But in third and seven, forced into the shotgun. Greg in trouble. Greg Townsend, number 93, a rookie from TCU. Townsend had had 12 sacks on the season. That makes 13. That's the second sack of the day. You get the, the sense of the reason that they don't want to have to be forced to throw the football. Craig just cannot find the receiver open, and the offensive line can't stop the Raider rush. Here he comes, number 93, Townsend coming on the outside. Right there, Pickell from the inside also getting a piece of that sack. Jeff West, high but short. Greg Pruitt, no fair catch. Breaks a couple of tackles, and he's down at the Raider 27-yard line. So timeout with four minutes and 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Raiders leading the Seattle Seahawks three to nothing as we reflect back on other AFC AFL championships. How about 1968? The numbers were 12 to 13. Joe Namath, number 12. Don Maynard, number 13. And the Jets went on to the Super Bowl. Raider offense has the ball, so the defensive coaches go into the school room, go to that chalkboard. Charlie Sumner, Willie Brown talking over philosophy, exactly how they want to work against that Seattle offense. And whatever they're doing, it's working so far. They've held Warner to just a dozen yards. That was the key for them. They lead 3-0, four and a half minutes remaining. First quarter here in Los Angeles. Marcus Allen with a huge hole is out to the 36-yard line. An eight-yard gallop before Greg Gaines could make the stop. Dick, there are a lot of one-on-one -on -one wars down there on the line of scrimmage. And one of the most vital of those wars is between Henry Lawrence and Jacob Green. On this play, Lawrence faking the pass, getting Green upfield. A little draw play does a good job. And look at that. You better believe he's feeling the pressure of his job today. Allen picking up eight yards now has 30 for the first quarter. Second and two. Batted in the air and complete. It appeared to be Joe Nash, the nose guard, who had his hand up. Might have been Jacob, Jacob Green. Green. It was 79. And you saw Jacob beaten out on the last play. Lawrence did a great job on that play of holding him on the line. But Jacob has one other advantage. He's got long arms. Good stop on the line of scrimmage. He knows he's not going to get to the quarterback. Does the next best thing. Goes up, puts that arm on the football, and negates the pass. Great camera coverage. We're right in green shoulder pads as he stops the Raiders on second and three. Now it's third and three. Marcus Allen to the 47 and a first down. Allen who caught 68 passes during the course of the year to lead the American Conference running backs in pass receptions. There it is. He caught five last week too and what a 
What an all-around performer he is, and so dangerous. He's used in in a variety of ways, and even when he doesn't have to be, even when he doesn't have the ball, you have to respect his presence. So he's a good decoy as well. But he's all by himself here, finding a gap. That's Bruce Schultz, 58, cutting across. They found room underneath the linebackers. Allen again, and he's to the 50-yard line, a gain of three. Jeff Bryant, number 77, number one pick out of Clemson a couple of years ago, made the stop. Dick, we talked about the position and push offense of the Seattle Seahawks. The running game of the Raiders predicated on physical strength. Big offensive linemen, one-on-one -on -one blocking. They don't use many combinations or traps. They come right after you, and they use their strength to drive you off the line. Pluck it off, play action. They can't get him. They're finally hit from behind, and Puckett is tackled at the 48. Jacob Green persevering. It'll be third down and about five. Puckett's a gamer. Doesn't always look the best. Sometimes looks a little awkward out there. But look at the courage he shows here. Tremendous pressure. Still has his concentration downfield. Takes a couple of shots there. Tries to get around. Hannah was coming for the backside. He had to get away from him. Green knocked him down, but there's no sack on that play. Watch Green. He stays with it all the way, too. Comes all the way from the backside to finally make the tackle on Plunkett. Plunkett did a good job of not fumbling the football. On third and five. Number 35, Don Dufek. You talk about a story. Here's Dufek. He has been released by Seattle. He's like a bad penny. You can't get rid of him. They've released him three times, and they keep calling him back. He's just a kid that's tough, doesn't have the speed nor the size, but loves to play, and he's one of the, the top players on special teams and in that five- and six-pack defense. And they put him in there. They actually used him almost as a linebacker on that play. He got right up in there and did his job extremely well. Ray Guy finally gets an opportunity here to show his stuff. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for Seattle. Paul Johns back at the ten-yard line. Beautiful spiral. Johns lets it go and into the end zone. Even if he touched it, doesn't matter. It's a muff, and the ball will come out to the 20-yard line. First down for the Seattle Seahawks, and a timeout. 1:15 remaining in the first quarter. The Raiders lead by three. Well, like coming home for this guy, Merlin Olson, you played out there for so many years. Uh, you sense the, the real emotion, the crowd. It's usually not a very noisy crowd. It's, they call themselves sophisticated in L.A. It's, man, they're hand clappers. They're not the noisy Eastern rowdy. Well, they're not, but they're here today, and, and that's, as, that's as rowdy a reception as I've ever seen a team get in the Coliseum here. Played here a lot of times, Dick, and never played in front of a crowd this big. And have to tell you, only two occasions I really felt the crowd got involved. They could do it today. Seattle trailing, 3-0, ball at the 20-yard line. Warner, and again, surrounded, gets only a couple. And Kurt Warner thus far has been kept well in check. And let's go back to that premise. The Raiders say number one and number two and number three on their list is to stop Kurt Warner. They stop him, they feel they can win easily. They really do have the horsepower to knock down your passing game. If Warner can run effectively, he forces them to honor the run and also makes it possible for the run passes to be effective against the Raider defense. Number one pick out of Penn State. Has only 14 yards so far in eight carries. And going long for Metzler and overshoots him, or Charlie Young, rather. And Young was open. Mike Davis had been beaten, but Craig's throw was a bit too long. Alzado applied pressure on the quarterback. There's the Reverend himself down there, and there's a man who plays with his emotional heart. Young coming off the ball, working on Mike Davis. Strong safety, number 36, put a good move on him. You saw him drive inside, but a lot of pressure on Craig. Had no chance to take advantage of that little edge that he had on the strong safety. Lester Hayes interception setting up a Chris Barr 20-yard field goal. The only points of this first quarter. <laughs> and Steve Larchin in motion on third and eight. Harold Jackson is short of the first down at the 27-yard line. 
with Mike Haynes on the coverage. And Seattle will have to give up the ball. Seahawks running a very complicated three wide receiver offense on one side. Motion by Larger, who stopped in the middle and then continued on across. But they could not fool the Raiders secondary. Raiders doing an excellent job of working one on one and controlling the receivers. You see them there dogging them man to man. Now that's that's what you do when you're man to man. You stay on top of that man. You discourage the quarterback from throwing the football to him. And that is the end of the first quarter of this American Conference Championship game. It's 3-0, the Los Angeles Raiders leading the Seattle Seahawks. The winner to play, the Washington Redskins in Tampa Bay Super Bowl, two weeks hence. The Raiders lead 3-0 after the first period. And on this first play of the second quarter, Jeff West <laughs> fighting the enemy. May the force be with him, or with the Raiders, I guess is the case. At the other end, Greg Pruitt. Short kick, Pruitt, fair catch. 36, maybe the 37-yard line. So on the short kick by West, the Raiders have excellent field position. One or two plays indeed can turn the game around, and the special teams often create those big plays. And Greg Pruitt had the longest punt return for a touchdown this year. That was against the Washington Redskins, 97 yards. Timeout. Raiders have the ball and the lead. Floating overhead, the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia, from Carson, California, our pilot. John Creighton from Orcas Island, Washington. Now watch out, John. Don't look just at the Seahawks now. The 194-foot Columbia cruising 1,000 feet over the Coliseum. George Simpson is our cameraman. Lyle Alcedo talking to Earl Leggett on the sideline. And Craig has gone to the phones. They were working on his shoulder a little bit earlier. Maybe got a little soreness in that throwing. Leading 3-0. Plunkett from his own 36. Wide open is Barnwell. Hit by Kerry Justman at the 48-yard line. First down, Los Angeles. 11 yards on the play. Plunkett certainly has played exceedingly well since he came in for an injured Mark Wilson. Seems to have much more patience now. Not trying to force the ball. And also dumping the ball off quicker when the pass pattern is not there. But Justin giving Barnwell too much room on that play. And again, that's part of the bend but don't break philosophy. But you can't bend too far with this Raider offense. Todd Christensen and Kenny Easley, two men on their way to the Pro Bowl, and Easley able to get a hand in there and knock it away from the big tight end. You get a feeling for the quality of Easley's athletic ability when you see on this play how well he stays one-on-one -on -one with Todd Christensen. Reads it well. Now, he's got to make up about a step and a half. Watch the hands here. Christensen has the catch. Look at Easley. Comes right in and knocks the ball away. Another look at it for from Plunkett's point of view, and you'll see it better here. Christensen had to catch. Juggled it, was gonna make a great grab. Frank Hawkins. And a tough little back from Nevada Reno plows to the Seattle 43, about two yards short of a first down. He was a well-kept secret out here in the shadow of Marcus Allen. 526 yards, made some major contributions, had his best game in the win at Dallas on Mark Wilson started for the Raiders his first game. Just part of what we said earlier, the number of ways in which this Raider team can hurt you. Offensively, you start concentrating on Marcus or you start concentrating on Branch and they hit you somewhere else. Third and two. Bucket looking deep. He's got the first down at the 39. Shelton Robinson made the tackle. One of the things often said about Jim Plunkett is that he is not a mobile quarterback. And indeed, he does not have great foot speed. But he knows how to get those crucial yardage. Two big runs in the game last week. Right here. He cannot find the open receiver. They rushed him with three men. He knows there's only about a yard and a half, two yards for the first down. He's got it. Drops to the ground. It's done. Hawkins. Earning 
gaining about five yards to the Seattle 33. Joe Nash and company with the tackle. Seahawks defensive philosophy. They try and keep everything in front of them. They try and force you to make the mistake. They give up a lot of yardage in the process. And against a team that is well disciplined and will not cough up the football, will not turn it over, they end up giving a lot of points away. They can't afford to give too many to this Raider team. Seattle was 27th, next to last in the league in giving up yardage. Green Bay was 28. Marcus Allen back in, he's to the 30. That'll be shy of the first down by a long yard. Nash again, the free agent pick from Boston College, making the tackle. Nash certainly has been a pleasant surprise for that defense. Up inside where Mano Tuiasa Sopo had patrolled the lanes for so many years, Nash has gotten himself in there and made it tough for Mano to get back on the field. Third down and one. Three nothing Raiders, 11.35 left. First half. Stopped at the 30-yard line. A terrific tackle by Keith Butler, inside backer from Memphis State. Allen didn't get an inch. So it's fourth and one, and we'll see what Tom Flores elects to do. He's going to go for it. You see Marcus Allen say, let's go for it. The crowd agrees. And I, that's, a quick, that's an interesting choice right there. He's playing to win. In the, in the playoffs, you can't play conservative football. There's no tomorrow. Chuck Knox knows the pressure right now. Squarely on his defense. And right down in the pitch. Let's see who can control the line. Hawkins, and he is stopped. And the Seahawks, with a great stand, stopped the Raiders on third and one and fourth and one. This time it was Joe Nash who got there first. You saw the stats. Seven for seven. On fourth down situations, the Seahawks said, hey, not anymore, seven for eight. So the Raiders spurned a 47-yard field goal attempt. That's what it would have been from the 30, as the Seahawks, we'll see if that gives them an emotional lift, stop first Allen and then Hawkins. And Tom Floor is not at all happy about the results. Electing to gamble, disappointed, <laughs> as he should be on that play. So it remains 3-0 Los Angeles Raiders, 11 minutes left in the half. Seattle indeed was 7-7, seven and seven, then beat the Giants in New England, last two regular season games to earn a wild card spot. And then winning two playoffs in a row, Denver at home and the big upset at Miami last week. Four wins in a row, first time ever in their eight years. third and fourth and short it's David Hughes gain of a couple they may be King on Warner and Chuck Knox trying to give it to the other back Reggie Kinlaw with the stop in the second game here on this turf Hughes had a big day I believe he had 79 yards in that contest and the re main reason was that they were zeroing in so solidly on Warner that he was able to break some nice runs good runner in his own right he also is the man that caught a touchdown pass on a fake field goal by Jim Zorn and some of the Los Angeles writers who remembered Knox's conservatives said, hey, that's not the way you played when you were the Rams coach for five years. He has changed. Warner. I bet Warner's second-guessing himself now. He had an opening inside, cutting back, elected to go back outside, and ran into nothing but black jerseys. Warner does such a great job of, of cutting and working against the grain, but the Raiders are doing a great job on Warner. And what they've been able to do so far is to shut off the inside. They've been able to string things out, keep their people almost like a picket line in front of him. Enjoy two good days and the two wins against Los Angeles but only 16 yards today, so it's third and six. Bill Patel, the rookie from Rutgers. 
That's the third sack of the day for the Raiders. They're already establishing the fact that if you can't run the football, we're going to put the squeeze on your quarterback, and you're going to have a long afternoon. Piquel right smack in the middle of your screen, working on 59, Blair Bush. Now, it's just a simple matter of taking too much time, and Piquel showing you how quick he can get to the outside and get a hold of your quarterback. Great coverage downfield. Craig could not find an open man. West to punt, through it. Fair catch at the 38-yard line. So again, the Raiders begin in rather good field position. They have the only score of the game, a 20-yard field goal by Chris Barr. Coliseum in Los Angeles. Tom Flores on the right. Tom Catlin, assistant Seattle coach on the left. Catlin, the defensive coordinator who's trying to counter the Raider offense. Flores responsible for that offense. And he's, uh, he's had the better day so far. They put more yardage up and have got three points up. Marcus Allen corralled at the 38-yard line by Shelton Robinson, who played with Lawrence Taylor. They were the linebackers at North Carolina. Robinson was a free agent. Taylor, of course, a number one pick and star with the Giants. Shelton, one of those big play people, worked his way back into that lineup and doing a good job of stretching back on that play. Dave Craig, it has not been a good first half for him, nor for Kurt Warner, but the Seahawks trail only 3-0. Looking for Branch. He's got him. And a first down at the 50-yard line. Dave Brown made the tackle for Seattle along with Easley. Time. Such a critical thing in a ball game like this. And look at the time that Plunkett has. They're coming with the blitz. The Raider offense does an excellent job of picking it up. Plunkett directing traffic. Has time to sift to his left. And when you give Cliff Branch that amount of time in front of a linebacker, forget it. He's out there. He's coming to the right here. He's being waved inside by Plunkett. And Plunkett hands him the football here. Brown makes the tackle, but it's a big first down. Branch, the number one receiver in playoff history in yards. And Marcus Allen breaking into the clear. He's to the 34-yard line. Sixteen more yards for Marcus Allen. Great running backs. Change direction. They change their pace. Marcus Allen just flying down the field. He makes about four or five moves getting down there, but those moves always take him downfield. Look at the way he just accelerates through that hole in the line, sets up the blocks downfield, and then as a good back will do, make sure that he tackles the football. He's going ahead on the tackle. At the 35, first down, 6.51 left in the first half. Plunkett to Barnwell. He is out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Terry Justin, number 26, working as a cornerback on Barnwell, one-on-one -on, -one on that situation, giving him a lot of room. Watch the amount of room he gives Barnwell. Barnwell drives him to the inside. You can't give a receiver that much room in front of you and hope that he won't catch the ball. Plunkett did a good job of reading the play and delivering a zipper out there to Barnwell. First down at the 14-yard line as the Raiders threaten to add to their 3-0 lead. Allen tripped up at the 11-yard line by Bruce Schultz, number 58, University of Texas. There's another special quality that great running backs have, and that is vision. They see the openings. Schultz starts back. Allen saw that and cut. He was going left. The play is designed left. He cut all the way back to the right side. Schultz did a good job of getting back there to trip him up. At the 11, second and seven. Stop just inside the five. It'll be very close to a first down. John Harris made the defensive play from his safety spot. Todd Christensen, who led all 
of the National Football League receivers with his 92 receptions. One of the reasons that Christensen has been used so effectively is that Raiders really lack a control receiver. Bobby Chandler did that for them for quite a while, and when Chandler retired, they did not have that middleman. They have gone to the tight end to kind of fill that gap, and Christensen has done a marvelous job of, of being that receiver. Third and a yard. Allen to the one. playoffs you need big play people and you need people who are willing to sell out watch Marcus Allen here he's going up and over the top he doesn't care what he hits on the other side he did one like he made a move like that last week and launched himself all the way into the end zone one yard away Hawkins not quite Frank Hawkins stopped just shy of the goal line looking right into the eyes of Plunkett as he checks that defense, trying to find uh, some clue as to perhaps an opening that might not have been there when he broke huddle. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. You can feel the intensity and the excitement in Jim Plunkett. 3-0, the Raiders lead. This drive started back at around the 34-yard line. He's used Allen throughout. Let's see if he gives him the chance for the touchdown. Wants to try crowd quiet. Hawkins again. Touchdown. to the field. Looked like he may have dinged himself a little on that last play. He is the blocker. Look at the way Hawkins reaches that ball out for the goal line. Now all he has to do is break the plane of the goal line with that ball and he's sticking that ball, ball which is dangerous but he cut it in there. Chris Barr to try the extra point. And the Raiders take a 10 to nothing lead. Frank Hawkins camping a 61-yard drive in nine plays. They check Marcus Allen to make sure that he's okay, blocking for Hawkins on that touchdown. Dr. Rosenfeld looking at it. Looks like he's looking at Marcus's eye there. Marcus, the blocker here. You see him right there, 32, drove in, head up to make some room for Frank Hawkins. You see Hawkins sticking that football over the goal line, but right now, some grave concern for the health of Marcus Allen. But the board house reach of Frank Hawkins makes it 10 to nothing. The favored Los Angeles Raiders lead it 10 nothing with four minutes, 17 seconds left in the half. Chuck Knox does not have the kind of team that can overcome a big lead by such a powerful club as the Raiders. This is critical. This is a critical series. They've got to get their offense on track, get points on the board. And they have to take some chances. We'll see. Barr's kick is short, coming down to Dixon on the run at the 15. He's hit at the 25-yard line. And we'll see if Dave Craig and the Seattle defense has any surprises for us when we return. We have a timeout. 4.09 left in the second quarter. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You can see Marcus Allen working on a mouse under the right eye of cut like I can see the blood on his fingers. There it is. Nothing that'll keep him out of the game. The Seahawks have the ball at the 25-yard line. Craig's arm is hit again. So they've really put the pressure on Dave Craig. That is his fifth pass attempt. 
He has only one completion, that for five yards. He's been intercepted, and he's been sacked three times. His life has been miserable in this first 30 minutes. Well, and partly miserable. You see Zorn signaling the plays in, and they've made a change on that sideline over there. Chick Harris normally signals in, and he's doing that, but they got Zorn signaling just in case the Raiders are trying to pick off their signals defensively. Rod Martin made that last defensive play on Craig. Draw play to Warner. Nothing there. Now, Kurt Warner has been tied up, corralled, checked, and he has 18 yards in 10 attempts. They've tried to be relatively conservative in what they've done so far, Dick. We've got to wonder if maybe they're not going to have to pull out the stops now, change their philosophy. Knox is going to have to come out of character. What if Chick was a signal man in the Navy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Watch the pick, Russ! Watch the pick with 33! Third down and eight. Dornick. Howie Long rips him down at the 22-yard line. Listening at home, I think you may have heard one of the Raiders yelling on the sideline. Watch the pitch to 33. And sure enough, the little toss out to Dornick. Dornick has been the third down specialist, and they alertly anticipated the play. Watch it right here. Dornick just circling out of the backfield, but there are about as many Raiders out there as there are Seahawks, and that's Howie Long and Lester Hayes and Townsend and Martin. They all want a piece of it. So Seattle unable to move the ball again. Their offense has been almost zero, and West another short kick. Fair catch by Pruitt at the 41-yard line. So West's failure to get any depth on his kicks, and there's another scuffle. Otis McKinney, 23, and lots of white shirts. 37-yard punt. This is something you really can't afford to do when you come to play on Raider turf. They would love to get you in a boxing match, get you in a fight on the field. That's their kind of football. The minute you start playing their game, they've won the battle. Keith Simpson, number 42, seemed to be the one squaring off with McKinney. Might have been Eric Lane, 37. That's twice now that McKinney's been involved in those. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Receiving team, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Kicking team. Well, that's sure the easy way out for the officials. They don't have to really call anything. Al Davis. Controversial character, yeah, but not when it comes to wins and losses. This has been the most successful franchise in all of professional sports, the Oakland Los Angeles Raiders. Time out. Well, if that last possession was critical for the Seattle offense, then we'd have to say the same thing for the Seattle defense. Should the Raiders add to the 10 0 lead, then uh, Al Davis and just, the former right-handed pitcher Don McMahon up there would see uh, maybe an insurmountable halftime lead. Just a little ad. He's wearing, Davis is wearing the same outfit he wore last week. I think maybe he's got a little superstition in him. Does he have any other outfits? No, they're all the same color, but that's the same one I think as last week. Total yards, 134 to 8. Plunkett scrambling again to the 45-yard line, a gain of about five. Keith Butler chased him down, 219 left in the half, and the clock is running. Dick, in our opening, as we were talking about these two quarterbacks, we talked about the fact that the quarterback really institutes the play. He's got to get the ball into play. He's the guy that can have great impact on what happens on the field, not only on the set plays, but like that, on a scramble play. If he can't make it one way, he'll make it another. Plunkett's a winner. He, got a, he showed us on that play why. Two minutes. The two-minute warning has been given. Los Angeles Raiders 10. Seattle Seahawks nothing. Preceding announcement furnished by the National Football League. Sonny Jurgensen, he has to be happy today. His alma mater, pro football alma mater. The Washington Redskins defeated the 49ers 24-21. They are in the Super Bowl at halftime on NFL 83. They'll have the top plays from that National Conference Championship as well as those from the first half of our game. The winner to meet Washington, the Super Bowl defending champion in Tampa in a couple of weeks. Chuck Knox. 
There it is. Faint heart. He, he's full of those little quotes, and he loves to share them with his team. What he's saying there is you've got to go all out to win. That's about where he is in this, in this game. Plunkett looking deep and going long for Barnwell. To the six-yard line, and we have a flag down, and the Seahawks are saying it's against Los Angeles. Well, you knew that was coming. Barnwell using those outs, and finally Justin took the bait, and he went deep. And, of course, that's exactly what they wanted to see. And now the officials are saying, no way. The holding is against the Seahawks. Jacob Green was frozen back at the 50-yard line in disbelief. He thought he had been held. Holding, number 57, defense, decline. Holding is First called out. against Sheldon Robinson, number 57. Todd Christensen coming out of the backfield on Gaines, driving across. And there is the holding call, right there. Meanwhile, Barnwell with a bomb downfield. It's first and goal at the seven-yard line. Marcus Allen to the five-yard line. And, of course, the Raiders now with the advantage of chewing up the clock on the run as well with 138 left in the half. The vertical game. The Raiders talk about getting the ball deep. This is on that last deep pass play, and Justin anticipating the out had taken the bite, and Plunkett did a good job of getting that ball deep before they could be covered on the second man down. Plunkett now 6 for 9 passing, 109 yards. Second and goal. Frank Hawkins, touchdown! Did a good job of mixing those plays. This one right to Hawkins. Hawkins getting by Keith Butler, number 53, and into the end zone. That's easily number 45. It finally stops him, but he's all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. Chris Barr adds the point. And with 106 left in the first half, the Raiders have galloped into a 17 to nothing lead. Writing the good blocking of 79, Bruce Davis, 73, Charlie Hanna. And watch the play here, just driving outside. The Seahawks cut off inside. Butler had a chance. Couldn't stop him with the arm tackle. And Hawkins, with good power, puts his feet and the ball in the end zone. Uh, you fans who have been watching football throughout this day will collect. And if you're a Seattle fan, you're hoping it was 21 to nothing, Washington leading San Francisco in the second half, almost into the fourth quarter. 49ers rally to tie. Chuck Knox, however, doesn't have the same kind of team as San Francisco. Finds himself down 17 to nothing. Zach Dixon and David Hughes are deep for Seattle. Seahawks have all three timeouts left and 106 remaining. Picked up by one of the front men, it was Eric Lane, and he returns to the 32-yard line. Raiders were offside. Craig to Largent. 44-yard line. That'll be a rarity for Seattle. I think they have a first down. They also have a penalty, which they will elect to refuse. Brett Townsend, so eager to get his hands on Craig, he stepped across the line. There it is right there. You see him taking the big step. August getting up later as he knows that they've gotten the offside. But it's a free play. They went ahead and took advantage of the play and were able to pick up a first down. Of course, they took the yardage. 
It's also a free timeout. That's Sam Merriman, a linebacker, being attended to. Shoulder appears. Largent's first catch of the game. He had 72 on the season. And, of course, is one of the legitimate stars. Merriman apparently injured on the kickoff return. For grabs. Mike Davis with the interception as Craig's arm was hit, and we have an, <laughs> a rugby play that's still alive. The Raiders keep passing it back, and this is James Davis with it. Now there was a clip or two. The flags are thrown, the whistles are blowing. <laughs> we got all of Pete Rosell's laundry out there on the field, and Craig leveled on that last play. We saw, them, we saw them working on his shoulder early. I think he may have been hurt on that play. Townsend, one of the men who hit him just viciously from the backside. You see the penalty for clipping being assessed. No, that's an the illegal Raiders. pass oh, against illegal. the Raiders. All right, illegal pass. We saw a very distinct clip, too. Ooh, there's the shot right there. Long Howie Long start. coming from the front. He really got sandwiched on that play. And watch... Boy, it's like hearing the count. Seven, eight, nine. He, no, he didn't. <laughs> he has had a rough day so far. Now he's going to go and try and make the tackle. He doesn't, he doesn't know if the play's live or not. Looking behind him to see if anybody's coming to level him again. Yeah, his eyes are glassy. His jaw a little stiff. He really got rocked. Now the Raiders already ahead 17-0. 41 seconds left in the half. The Raiders have all three timeouts. Marcus Allen for about eight. He's had, I believe, more yards rushing than the entire Seattle offense in this half. This is a situation that Tom Flores has to relish. He's got the lead. He certainly knows that he can run the ball effectively. Plunkett has been effective in the air. All of their offensive machinery is working properly. And on the other side, Catlin, Knox, Prohaska have to be gravely concerned at what's transpiring in this game so far. Well, Marcus Allen indeed has been quite a weapon. 70 yards rushing, while Seattle's total offense unofficially is less than 20. Man, well, it is over 29 yards for Seattle's offense. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. Nick, for a long while, Jimmy Zorn started as quarterback for the Seahawks, and Zorn to Largent was a call I heard you make many times. You know, Sergeant Largent's name has not been heard a lot today, and of course, Zorn has been replaced by Craig, but they need some of that same kind of hookup, and well, I think they need more than prayers today. <laughs> they need some touchdowns. 17 to nothing. They're praying right now for a turnover, Dick. Good play action. And the bomb to Branch. Actually hit Cliff on the heels, I believe. And Dave Brown is complaining that Branch used a little extra to get him out of the way of the interception. No flag. Brown did a good job of reading the play and staying deep. Again, the, the philosophy of this Raider team is to stretch the field. They want to make you cover as much ground as possible. They want to get you down deep. They want to stretch you from side to side with the run. On this particular play, they're not successful, but they put a great deal of fear in that secondary. They make you anticipate the deep play, and that causes you to be back on your heels. That's really a good call in this situation, too. Less than a minute, you're ahead by 17. Even if they intercept it, so what? You got him down at the five-yard line. Third and three. Oh, beautiful throw and catch by Barnwell sliding at the Seattle 33. Dick, we talked to Plunkett. We asked him, when you throw the ball, do you know that you've thrown a good ball? Uh, no, I always keep my eye on the ball as much as I can. I, in fact, I'm kind of like a golfer or a bowler. I kind of 
try to talk the ball into the receiver's hands sometimes when I know it's not quite, quite as accurate or I think I might have missed by a little bit uh, or more. I'm kind of going to one side and hopping around and trying to guide it into the guy's hands. You see Plunkett in a red uniform in practice. Of course, the quarterbacks wear all red. They don't want them to be hit by their own teammates. And here you see a chance. Throws the ball out. He's giving it a little body lean there. He got that one. Leaned that one right into the hands of Malcolm Barnwell. And a timeout call by Los Angeles. They have one remaining and 21 seconds left. And excellent they have been in this first half with a 17-point lead. And they look as if they're trying to get some more. Well, they're not satisfied with that lead. They, they know that the Seahawk team uh, beat them up in Seattle when they had two yards in passing offense. Of course, today, Plunkett and the Raiders have not been generous in the turnovers. Barnwell having perhaps his best day of the season, and we're not out of the half yet. The total offense, Raiders 221, Seattle 16 in this first half. Plunkett to Allen. He's tackled at the 27-yard line. The clock is running at 12. The Raiders do not use their final timeout, and now do. Plunkett just talked to us about how he uses his body to get that ball to move. Well, I, let's see if he does do it here. Yeah, there, well, le leaning a little bit, sure enough. An easy throw there, just a little finesse call. He's looking to the sideline here. He did eventually call timeout as they moved the field goal team onto the field. Chris Barr, who started the scoring with a short 20-yard field goal. His wife, the brunette, Martini. She said for a long time that she thought that his first name was much maligned, as Chris Barr said, because every time she saw my name in print, she'd say, and field goal kicker, much maligned, Chris Barr, the miss from 38. Well, there's not been a lot of negative this year for him. He's had his very best season, 21 for 27. He's kicked his longest from 47 yards. This one would be 44. Dick, one of the things you need in playoff competition, you need the, the game breakers, you need a dependable kicker, you need to be healthy, you, you need to have emotion. And boy, this first half, the Raiders have had all of those things and, and more. And the more meaning talent. Everyone knew they had superior talent. It'll be 45 yards. David Hum to hold. be any more on target than that. Chris Barr with some frosting. Much heralded Chris Barr, perhaps. Much heralded indeed. You saw the emotion. It's one of the interesting things about this Raider team. They don't make a lot of, they don't make a lot of big deal about winning. There's a, an interesting quote from Barr. We ask him, you know, how soon do you know when you hit the ball well? He said, the second I hit that ball, I know if it's a good hit. And if I'm going to miss it, it goes off to the right. Well, I don't think his wife knows quite as soon. She's got to wait for the officials to signal. Now she knows. And <laughs> you see the reaction there. From the kicking bars out of Penn State, Chris Barr versus brother Matt, the booter for the Cleveland Browns. Three seconds left in this all Raider first half. Plunkett has not thrown an interception in the playoffs this year, nor has he thrown a touchdown. That's a rather interesting statistic, but he has been effective. 63% completion rate. Taking no chances. He skids it down to Bruce Schultz, and the big linebacker returns to the 37 at the end of the first half. Yep, this crowd of over 90,000 at the Coliseum, most of them Raider fans, and they were well treated by a near-perfect half of football by the men in black and silver. The score at the intermission, Tom Flores, Raiders, 20. Chuck Knox's Seattle Seahawks, nothing. And indeed, Cinderella will have to find some new slippers for the second half. Jim Plunkett, Dave Craig, tuning up, ready for the second half. And Los Angeles will get the ball first. Dick, if there is one thing to give Seattle a little bit of a boost, Knox has always gotten his teams prepared to play well here. He's 32-4 and four playing in the Coliseum, and he has never lost to the Raiders. He's 4-0 and against the Raiders. But they've really got their work cut out for them if they're going to keep that series intact. There are the stats. And the ones that jump out at you, obviously the turnovers, 
the time of possession and look at the yardage nine yards minus nine yards passing for the Seahawks who have done a great job of throwing the uh, ball under Craig and of course Plunkett mixing plays well on the field has had the benefit of real balance and the turnovers normally that's Seattle's fort two turnovers by the Raiders and the Seahawks have not gotten the ball back once by interception or fumble of course the Raiders did not turn the ball over last week and that big victory over Pittsburgh either so the only times the Raiders have lost this year, their four defeats, as we documented earlier, they have self-destructed, but they certainly have not in the playoffs. Norm Johnson, high kick. Lee Montgomery. 30, 35-yard line. Well, the Raiders have been very special in every element of the game, passing, running, defense, even on the special teams. Recapping the scoring, Barr started it with a short 20-yard field goal after a Hayes interception. Then it was Hawkins plunging from one yard to make it 10-0 in the second quarter. Hawkins again from five yards, 17-0, and Barr completed the Raider first half with a 45-yard field goal. Dick, defensive statistics for the Seahawks. They've gotten good performance out of Nash on the nose with six tackles and Butler with five, but they've had to do too much tackling today. It's been a dominant Raider offense. and Christensen to the 41 yard line and it took three Seahawks to stop him Christensen with about seven yards on the play extremely important to come out and try and get things going your way at the beginning of this second half you get a chance to feel the, the Raider philosophy here come out drop the quick pass a high percentage pass put it into sure hands Easily the man, no, it's not easily, it's Butler, 53, the man working on Todd Christensen, Gaines throwing himself in over the top. And there's Kenny Easley there on the ground, stretching his leg. Must have some cramps or something. But watch Easley here. He's the man who came in, put the clincher on Todd Christensen. Maybe stretch one of those muscles in the back of his leg. Dick. So while they attend to the former All-American at UCLA, pro bowler Kenny Easley, we pause for these words. the MC Championship. It was Bob Greasy to the Hall of Famer, Paul Warfield. 75 yards. Miami was on its way to the Super Bowl. Todd Christensen and Kenny Easley in that collision both helped off the field. Christensen with a knee and Easley perhaps more serious. It's right here as he finishes off the tackle on Christensen, and it looked like his knee was, his foot was locked in the ground. Bubble, and the Seahawks might finally have that elusive turnover. That's the, that's it. That's the play that has helped them through the course of the season and the playoffs. Prior to today, in the last three games, they were 11 and one on the turnover table, and Bryant comes up with a loose ball after a vicious hit. It's what you had to have coming out of the locker room. And as we said earlier, you set the tempo on the first half of the second, or the first series of the second half. Frank Hawkins going back against the grain. Took a vicious hit over there. Looked like Jacob Green, number 79, coming. No, Green, I believe, 79 is the man who hits. No, it isn't either. Bruce Schultz. Oh, boy, did he level it. Coming from the outside, that ball just popped loose. So for the first time, Dave Craig is in Los Angeles territory at the 43. He comes out throwing. Intercepted. Matt Millen. Dornick drags him down at the 47. And Craig's miseries continue. We talked about emotion. We talked about the fact that the Seahawks have been playing on an emotional high. Well, sometimes that emotion drains so much out of you that you don't have anything left for the game. Maybe that's what's happened to Craig, who has not played well so far in this game. Matt Millen has played well. Read that play excellently. Got a good jump on the pass. Got across to pick that ball up, and he is absolutely thrilled. Former Penn State star, he had one interception during the course of the regular year. It remains 20 to nothing. 
Dave Craig. He's completed three passes to Seahawks and three to the Raiders. This one to Matt Millen, who jogged right across in front of Charlie Young on that play. Millen had been playing in the earlier two games with a bad foot and blamed himself in part, in fact, in the healthy part, for the losses early. He's done very well today. Seahawk possessions, and you see how futile they have been on offense. They have had bad field position all day, which doesn't help them, and certainly haven't done much with it. Well, it's the Raiders at the 47-yard line. Blunkett to Allen. Hit hard at the 45-yard line. The word on Kenny Easley is it's a hyper-extended knee. Doubtful that he will return. Of course, Easley, the, the best athlete on this Seahawk defense, and you begin to feel the frustration which is settling over that Seahawk bench. They have not given up, but they have got to be feeling the pain of what is happening on the field. Easley would love to get back into this game. He's jogging on the sideline, but boy, those knees are, are tough when you've hyperextended them. There's a lot, of, a lot of difficulty involved there. 21, Paul Moyer has replaced Easley. And the Raiders completing passes at will, and Cliff Branch with that catch is now the number two receiver in playoff history in the NFL. Fred Boletnikoff with 70 leads the way. Branch now with 67 to tie Drew Pearson. And here he is in action, picking up that record. Great performer. You see how he just settles in eye to eye with that defensive back and dares him, dares him to come up. And of course, the defensive back respecting his speed did not do it. Branch hooked out, got the pass. First down from the 34. Allen runs right by two tackers. First down at the 23. Jim Zorn, meanwhile, the backup quarterback, the starter of the first half of the season, apparently is going to replace Dave Craig on the next Seattle series. Just but a matter of time. Knox, when things are going sour, his quarterback is not playing well. Zorn has always been a big play quarterback. He's going to have a chance here. Well, he may enter the game behind 27-0, though. As the Raiders already have 20, and they appear to be driving relentlessly for even a larger lead. Almost intercepted. It was intended for Christensen, and Keith Butler, number 53, had his hands on it for Seattle. When a quarterback has that much time to throw, he's getting great protection from his offensive line. We mentioned the personal war between Lawrence and Green. Green has not had much of a war today. It's been all Lawrence. On the inside, it's been Dalby and the uh, two guards, Hannah and Marvin, and of course on the other side, big Bruce Davis. They have made it difficult for all those Seahawks today. Allen slithering to about the 17-yard line. John Harris got a piece of him. It'll be about third down and three or four. Let's look at uh, Hannah and Davis on the other side. 73-79 on this running play. Bryant stunning to the inside, and Hannah just buried him, making room for number 32, Marcus Allen, who's angry that he didn't get more yardage. Well, at these... The Redskins and Raiders meet in the Super Bowl. There'll be two giant offensive lines at work. Maybe the two biggest in the league. Lockett. First down again to the 12-yard line. Lockett had that first down major. Knew exactly where he had to go. Reached down and grabbed his ribs. He took a pretty good shot on that last play. There's a real man, Plunkett. He's known the trials and tribulations. He's had four shoulder operations, three knee operations, given up for loss by the San Francisco 49ers. A waiver pick just signed as a free agent. By then, the Oakland Raiders, that great comeback three years ago when the Raiders won the Super Bowl, and they're on their way again.
The ball knocked in the air and picked off by Charlie Hanna. Hanna's first reception of the year. He now leads all Raider linemen in catches. Well, we <laughs> celebrated that war between Lawrence and Green. Green finally got an arm on the quarterback's arm just in time to flip that ball in the air. But very alert play by Charlie Hanna. You've got to have alert players on the field. Watch it. Coming from the left side of your screen is Green right there. He gets the arm, the ball goes into the air, and it just scoops it off. He said, hey, where's my blocking? Come on, guys, open a hole for me. Boy, his brother John Hogg had us. That's just the way we used to play out in the backyard. Allen toppled at the nine-yard line. Uh, one thing, Merlin, that is quite apparent, even from our distant view in the press box, Seahawks, just as they did last week in Miami, they are hitting ferociously. They certainly are, and uh, that's... I mentioned Knox's communication with these players. He has really made believers out of them. He got them to, he really, his toughest job was to get them to change their self-concept, to believe in themselves. He's been able to, he's been able to do that and certainly has a great deal of pride in the way his Seahawks have played. Got bad news for Charlie Hanna. They've just ruled that a fumble recovery, not a pass reception. He remains tied with the other lineman. Time out by Plunkett. Well, as an offensive lineman, he can't receive a pass anyway. And, of course, that if, if Jim Plunkett's arm had started forward, would it need him to go that pass? The doors have been open for a long time here at the Coliseum, and they're proud that they've hosted every significant professional game. Who is this man, the right side, that good-looking fella, James Dean type? Well, over 30 years ago, that was taken at Skip Soda Shop near the Juniata campus in Pennsylvania, and a 185-pound offensive guard named Chuck Knox with those steel blue eyes was the, one of the campus stars. He wouldn't say so. One of the things that you've got to love about Knox, he is one of the few coaches that lets you know instantly he'd like to be out there with a helmet on. You sense that. You appreciate it. His players love him, Dick. He's a physical man. He's the kind of coach that's down there grabbing his players. Intercepted in the end zone by the Seahawks. Gregory Johnson, number 27, denied the touchdown. But it was good pass pressure that forced Plunkett into the mistake. Turnovers. The Seahawks knew they needed a little help today. They've got two here early in the second half. But they need to take advantage of these opportunities and get some points on the board. It's a long ways out of the hole they've dug for themselves. Pluckett scrambling around, throws a pass that was ill-advised, and it's picked off. He has not made many mistakes today. That was one of his first, Dick. Jim Zorn is the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks as they take over at the 20-yard line. Well, the same news for Kurt Warner. That number 28 in the football are drawing masses of black jerseys. Dick, a question coming into this game was, would this, would this Coliseum turf bother Warner? It's, it's a loose, uh, sandy, textured soil, and the root system has been pretty well chewed up by football games here. But the question, uh, really, I don't think it's been the turf that's bothered it. I think it's been the Raider defense and the tremendous surge that they're getting on the line of scrimmage. Good play from the linebacker that's shut him down. Incomplete to the tight end, Charlie Young, as Zorn offers his first pass attempt. Zorn was the starting quarterback for the Seahawks the first eight games of the year and was benched in the midst of a Pittsburgh 27-21 win at the Kingdom at mid-year. Craig came in in the second half, almost rallied the Seahawks to victory, and then Craig took over and took the team through the playoffs. Zorn, however, as you can see, now in his eighth year out of Cal Poly Pomona, has been... Uh, the number one man at that position for the Seahawks since their inception. Third down, a long eight. Intercepted. It appeared to be Mike Davis, his second of the game. Harold Jackson, the intended receiver. Howie Long's pressure created the interception. Both 
most of the big plays in a ball game have their roots with more than one man. Mike Davis goes away with the interception. But it's the pressure from Howie Long, number 75, on Jimmy Zorn. One-on-one. -on -one. He's coming here. He says the most important part of the rush, the first step. You saw it there, the good jump inside. Long driving. You see Zorn dropping back. You'll see the end. Here it is right now from the inside. Number 75 just bowling over the top. And Zorn throws the ball short. Davis is there to pull it out of the air and turn back in the other direction. We pause briefly for station identification from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. This is the NBC Television Network. Channel 36, WPCQ-TV, Charlotte. With Merlin Olson, this is Dick Enberg. American Football Conference Championship. Eight minutes remaining in the third quarter. Mike Davis's second interception. The Raiders have the ball again. 20-0 lead. Marcus Allen on his way. play without great blocking you've got to give a little bit of credit to the right side of that Raider line Todd Christensen tight end getting blocking there Lawrence out to seal off Robinson number 57 but here's the man that makes it go number 32 Marcus Allen John Harris in a foot race with Allen look how many yards Allen gets after the initial contact got another eight yards well Allen has not scored today it figures Plunkett will try to give him the ball He's earned it. Yeah, maybe not. There it is. Plunkett did exactly as you suggested he would. Didn't hand him the ball. Threw it to him. Again, the flexibility. The tremendous diversity of this greater offense. They've made a shambles of that Seahawk defense today. Here he comes isolated out of the backfield. Gets past the shot there at the line of scrimmage. And he's all alone in the corner of the end zone. Twenty-seven to nothing. Marcus Allen, as we watch him again, Marcus Allen in, well, not even three quarters, has 120 yards rushing. He's caught five passes for 40 more, 160 yards of offense, almost four times what Seattle has, and the touchdown payoff. Tremendous body control as he got past Schultz at Tom Flurry's nose. Hey, it's over. He knows. He's on his way to the Super Bowl. It'll take a major miracle now. 27 to nothing. The Raiders have dominated Seattle today. Dick, it's almost as if the Raiders just played their way through the regular season and then shifted gears coming into the playoffs. We watched them in action against Pittsburgh last week, and they didn't ever look back. They've done the same thing here. From a fast start, they're still accelerating. Well, so far... In the two playoff games, they've outscored the opposition 65 to 10, winning last week against Pittsburgh 38 to 10. Washington Redskins await the winners. Zachary Dixon stopped at the 25 26 yard line. Largent. That's one of the longest games of the entire day for Seattle to the 40-yard line, a game of about 14. Lester Hayes, the defender. And in the Raiders' scheme of defense, you'd think you'd be able to spring a Steve Largent with his clever feet more often, but the Raiders are an interesting team. They really don't give you much room on first down. They play basically the same philosophy of pressure defense on every down. And that makes it tough on all of those receivers. 
That's only the fifth first down of the game for Seattle. Complete to Warner. And he is to the Raider 48-yard line. That's the first time that Seattle has used Warner as a pass receiver, and he gains 12 yards. Warner getting downfield, getting a chance to get some open running room. First time he's had anything but black jerseys around him all day, Dick. Rod Martin, number 53. What a great player he is. He really had trouble making it into the NFL, didn't he, Dick? Well, they said I was too small. He was 195 pounds. That's why it was a 12th round draft pick. He said, I built myself up to 205 in my second year, and that's when I stuck with the Raiders. Now he's 225. David Hughes. Boy, oh, look at the energy and the desire to the 40-yard line. A tough eight for Hughes before Millen and Nelson can make the tackle. 27 to nothing. The Los Angeles Raiders in command with five and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. And those that have migrated from Seattle, we understand some 5,000 fans down to cheer the Seahawks. And those seats are getting harder. Offside, Warner. yard line here the one of the Raiders had jumped offside Mike Davis made the tackle 75 Howie Long in his eagerness to get across the line and get after the quarterback had, had gotten the quick jump and he said he likes to go against a train a team that tries to single up on you man to man because you don't have to worry about the traps he said you can just stretch out and fire out the minute you see anything move they got off a little early on that last play and take a penalty. 75, defense, defense. This is a defensive lineman's dream, Dick. When you know the other team has to throw the football, they've got to put it up. You don't even have to worry about the running game. James Garner, he's been a long time Raider fan. Right down on the sidelines. Zorn, and that's the first catch today for Paul Johns. We had 34 during the course of the regular season, four of those for touchdowns, as you can see. Zorn with that familiar left-hand delivery, able to spot Johns down the sideline. Johns will give you a little down. Looks like he's going to drive deep. Lester believed him, pulled off to the side, but you can't blame Lester Hayes. He knows that sideline pattern's not going to kill him. A quick touchdown is the one you've got to defend against when you've got that many points on the board and your opponents don't have any. First down. This is Zachary Dixon. Dixon, who did not carry during the regular season, used on special teams and runs very well. Dixon from Temple. He was an 11th round pick for Denver. Then he went to the Giants, the Eagles, the Colts, finally this year to Seattle. Dixon showing us some moves here. The same kind of lateral shaking that you see from the good back like Kurt Warner. The same kind of lateral moves you get from Marcus Allen, but not quite the same kind of speed. Rod Martin, number 53, coming from the backside. Fine play to get back in on, on the heels of Zach Dixon. It's a first down at the 11. Seahawks' best drive of the game, but they trail 27-0 with 4.40 left in the third quarter. Dixon's still in there. We don't know if Warner is hurt. Dorn threw it away. Large and well covered. Lester Hayes had him pinned deep in the end zone, and if the ball had been thrown directly to Largent, Hayes had a sure interception. We're checking on the sidelines to see the status of Kurt Warner. It may just be an equipment problem. Dick, we alluded to the strengthening. There you see them working on his ribs. No, it's not an equipment problem. That's a, an elastic bandage. Must have taken a shot to the ribs, and they're they're pacing him up pretty good there. He'll be back. Marcus Allen, of course, having a banner day. Warner has been stopped. Thorne. 
Oops. Dan Dornick, the intended receiver, as he was making his move over the middle, Zorn was expecting him to go outside. And that's the rust. Zorn has not been playing. The timing is just not there. Largent trying to find some room against Lester Hayes on the outside, and you see the very physical nature of the Raider defense right there, pushing him outside. And then a look inside. Dornick is the one that's coming inside. He had anticipated the throw back over the middle. Zorn trying to hit the quickie. But you see Dornick breaking the other way. Dornick, if the Seahawks lose, he's back in medical school tomorrow, has a radiology class. University of Washington. Zorn. But Dornick, incomplete, and what a play by Jeff Barnes, number 56, backup linebacker from California. And Dornick said he interfered with me. Not getting any sympathy from the officials. Not getting a yellow flag either. There's the play. Perfect timing as the hand goes up. The official not able to see any early contact if there was any there because he was shielded by the linebacker's body. It did look as if he had the left hand underneath pushing and the right hand high, but it was a difficult call for the official. Fourth down and 10 at the 11th. Good protection. Dornick. Touchdown. Whoops, and even at that, they're still wrestling. Number 22, Mike Haynes with Dornick. Well, the young man whose father is a physician, a brother of physician, continuing his studies at Washington Medical School, University of Washington in Seattle. He has himself the prescription for a touchdown. 4-0-1 left in the third quarter. Coming into this game, Dornick had handled the ball 29 times on third down situations, made 22 big plays. This is classic Zorn on this fourth down situation. Running to get a little extra time. Throwing the ball on the run. Excellent catch. And Dornick knew exactly where that goal was. Norm Johnson's extra point try. And the Seahawks on the board. Four minutes and a second left in the third quarter. They stopped the Raiders once in the end zone, only to find Marcus Allen coming back to score. But on this play, Zorn scrambling, buying time, finds his favorite third and fourth down receiver, Dornick, and seven points for the Seahawks and Chuck Knox. Knox finally has something to cheer about. Well, he's given the Seahawks fans their greatest season. Now they have something to cheer about in this ballgame. Bothered by an injury, the veteran from Michigan, Reggie McKenzie, has not played uh, in the playoffs, but he's a valuable part and part of the story. Chuck Knox rebuilding in Seattle, isn't he? He certainly is. His leadership has been just a, a very important factor in their success this year. Johnson kicks it straight away. Clee Montgomery at the goal line. Oh, and this is where Seattle is at its best. High kicks by Johnson. Terrific coverage and vicious hitting. Paul Moyer, Sam Merriman down to stop Montgomery at the 17. Dick, I think one of the most unusual statistics that I have seen in a great while, as we look at the stats on the drive, comes on special teams for the Seahawks on the number of fumbles that they have forced. Now, we'll get that up. I won't, I'm not going to tip my hand. That's interesting enough to let you read for yourselves. But they have just been incredible in the way they've been able to shake the ball loose on special teams because of hits like that. Plunkett starting at his 17. In the air and intercepted by Bruce Schultz. And the Seahawks have it at the Raider 25-yard line. So suddenly, Seattle with life. They've scored, and they get the big turnover at the 25-yard line. And there's both a Seahawk and a Raider down on the play. Malcolm Barnwell, the intended receiver. I believe that's Schultz. It's still on the ground. He was the man that took the shot. Charlie Hanna, the injured man down for the Raiders. The isolation here on Barnwell, and it's a good pass. 
skips off his shoulder. Watch it right here. The ball is thrown. He goes up. It's the hands that bounces off. But, boy, that is dangerous. You can't tip that ball in the air. you got too many white shirts back there. Bruce Schultz comes up and takes a real shock to the ribs. Looked like Hannah that leveled Schultz on the play. They were both hurt on the same tackle. Here's Plunkett. You can't blame the quarterback for that one. That's right into the receiver's hands. Now watch the quick reactions of Bruce Schultz, who's had a good day. And here's the tackle that hurt the two of them. Hannah and also Christensen in on the stop. Schultz, the big 6'6 linebacker, has not gotten up yet. George Anderson, the trainer, out for the Raiders, along with Dr. Rosenfeld. And the other side, it's Jim Witzel and Dr. Trumbull. They've, they've got all the troops out there today. This is a physical game, Dick. And let's, let's talk about something else. That the Seahawks have gotten a couple of other turnovers early. You see the pain there. Looks like Hannah may have come down on that elbow and, and shaken that shoulder a little bit. Let's see if we can see more of what happened. Hannah will come from the left side of your screen. As Schultz cuts back, Hannah's right there to hit him. Now, I believe he may have hurt himself when he hits the ground. He came down on his, on his elbow. Right there, I think maybe that you see the pain right there. I think that's when he got hurt. Seahawks go to Schultz. Have the ball at the 25-yard line. Warner is back in the game. That turnover table starting to even out. Zorn going deep. Incomplete. Byron Walker got away with a little push on the defensive back, Mike Davis. And Walker had a touchdown in his hands, anticipated the ball well, went up, got a hold of it, but couldn't hang on. Zorn had the ball well on target. Watch the play now. He drifts in right there over the top of Mike Davis and gets the ball in hand. He falls into the end zone if he can hang on to that football. Second down and 10. Nick, after the two other turnovers, the Seahawks handed the ball back. They can't afford that here. They need the seven. Warner. Drag down the defensive play. Van McElroy, 26. While Alzado ran right out on the field, Dick. Ran right out on the field to grab, congratulate the other defenders. Minus three for Warner. McElroy, his father, a minister for 50 years. I asked him, was he much of a football fan? He said, he's always been too busy. Been in the pulpit, still is. Down a little small town in Texas. McElroy has made some believers in his NFL career. Eight interceptions. He's on his way to the Pro Bowl. Zorn with flags down. Going deep, a man open, Dornick. Was he in bounds? No, he was out of bounds. No touchdown, he was out of bounds. It didn't appear that he got his feet in bounds, holding against Seattle anyway. Maybe it's just as well. Again, how many times have we seen Zorn running one way, turning another? You look at it. In the air, one foot down, second foot beyond the end line. Good call by the officials. Tried to drag that left foot, but couldn't quite get it in the end zone. But do you take the penalty here, or do you refuse the penalty, bring up fourth down? Find to believe they would maybe rather take the down than the yardage. No, they're going to take the yardage. Yeah, that's an interesting call. It has been a long third quarter, still two and a half minutes left. That's a vote of confidence for the defense. Holding on number 69, offense, still third down. Trying to read lips. It appeared to be against 65, Edwin Bailey, but not certain. Another look at Dornick. Goes up with a right foot, comes down. And the left foot did not appear to. Dorn going deep again. Could be intercepted. Lester Hayes was closest to the ball. That brings up fourth down and 23. And even though we're seeing a kicking team onto the field, the Raiders aren't going to believe that. They're going to they're going to be playing as if it's a regular series play. 
Jeff West, the punter, is on. Zorn leaves the field. Injury to Charlie Hanna was to the ribs. He may not return. Steve August has a knee injury, and he will not return to the Seattle lineup. This game taking its physical toll on both teams. West really missed that one. Nothing but about 10 yards on the kick. Very difficult for me to understand that. They have almost nothing to gain. They're going to pick up about, what, 10 yards on the play, Dick? 12 yards is all. And that doesn't make uh, things happy on the Seattle sidelines, but Knox is involved with talking with Jim Zorn. So for the third time, Seattle unable to take advantage of a turnover. That's been the story of the day. They had done that so well coming in, as we'd indicated, the last three ball games. They had taken the ball away 11 times, and it kept them in the ball games, got them their wins. Marcus Allen. And living his way to the 28-yard line in a gain of about three. Sheldon Robinson made the tackle. Steve Sylvester has gone in in place of Charlie Hanna. He's the man they've put into that offensive line to place, replace the injured man. Some might be wondering, Merlin, well, if Hanna can't play, if the Raiders go into the Super Bowl, what happens then? Well, they've got Kurt Marsh they could activate. Many felt he was their best lineman last year. He's recovered now from back surgery and is ready to go. Allen, a couple more to the 29. Greg Gaines, 56, one of the many free agents to star on this Seattle team. He's from Tennessee. He replaced Michael Jackson at mid-year when Jackson was hurt, and they really like the development of Gaines. He's one of the many pluses in the Seattle season. You talk about Marsh on the sideline. They also have Don Mosbar sitting over there. There's Marsh right there. He told me, he said, I would love to get in the game. Mark Wilson in the background, he'd like to have a chance too. But two other names you got to remember. Don Mosbar is around, and Shelby Jordan, too. Fine, fine talents just waiting for a chance to play in this Raider offensive line. Third and six. Barnwell, he's having a field day. Seattle doubling branch, and Barnwell is eating them alive. He now has five catches for 116 yards. Malcolm Barnwell, number 80. And it's a pleasure when you play with the kind of people that have to be double teamed, that means that you're going to have a chance to go one-on-one. -on -one. In this case, against number 42, Simpson, Barnwell drives him off with the pattern, comes back to the football, Plunkett delivers it on time and on target. Allen. Ooh, you could hear the pads crunch on that one as Moyer came up to make the hit. Well, you know, the point's well taken, too, and it, it applies to all sports, team sports, Merlin. When you have such good talent, it's like being in a baseball lineup. You get to hit in front of Madeline Maris, you're going to get some pretty good pitches, and you become suddenly a better hitter than if you were in a team that was down buried in the cellar. Certainly one of the essentials for playoff success, the kind of balance that forces you to respect all of the things a team can do to you. Well, Malcolm Barnwell is collecting that. We'll be back with a fourth quarter after these messages from your local station. The Coliseum in Los Angeles and the crowd announced that 88,734 is a new playoff record for the American Conference. The previous mark in 1973 when the Raiders played at Miami's Orange Bowl, 79,000 plus, nearly, well, over 9,000 more than that, 88,734. Statistics continue to reflect the dominance offensively and defensively of the Los Angeles Raiders. Fourth quarter begins, 27-7 Raiders. Marcus Allen to the Seattle 48, short of the first down. It'll be about third and four. Paul Moyer, Arizona State, Greg Gaines, Tennessee. Two free agents make the stop. Todd Christensen, of course, will be celebrated for his 93 receptions. But watch him here as he goes on Greg Gaines. He's the blocker in this case. Stays right on Gaines, locked up one-on-one. -on -one. Marcus is supposed to run around the other end. Todd says, hey, what, what are you doing out here? I'm holding this guy from going the other way. 
And all of a sudden, Marcus appears. Look, he's looking for the for the runner. Marcus finally comes back and almost runs right over Todd. Ole. He Ole. Needed, he needed a cape on that move. Warner, Bruce Ripps. Third and four. Come on! Plunkett Time angry. Out. Did you hear him? He's very upset. That's one of the things that's interesting about this Raider team. It's on-field control. Plunkett calls the signals down there. Of course, he works with Tom Flores, and he works with a with a set offensive plan. But there's no question that, that they take some advantages of other teams because Plunkett is such a veteran leader, he knows what's happening out there. Bruce Schultz getting some work on the sidelines, but Plunkett is a man who can take advantage of the little things that he senses on the field as a quarterback. That was a five-yard procedure penalty, third and ten. Marcus Allen, first down at the 38-yard line. Boy, Plunkett did a great job of just rainbowing that pass over two linebackers and right into the leaping efforts of Marcus Allen. That's kind of like shanking the ball off the tee and dropping it into the trap and rolling it up onto the green and stopping a few feet away from the pin. Not pretty, but boy, is it effective. Not a bad effort at the receiving end. First down at the 38. Washington Redskins. We congratulate Joe Gibbs' team again. Undoubtedly watching, looking for their opponent for the Super Bowl. Todd Christensen and Greg Gaines, an immediate hit at the 34-yard line. Now, meanwhile, Al Davis watching from the press level, constantly at practice. Uh, he is probably of all the owners in the game there's no question he does more coaching type things what are his other roles hands-on management and certainly he is the power source for this team what an incredible job he lets his players know how he feels about winning and losing and they have an unusual attitude here winning is expected here what an incredible job he lets his players know how he feels about winning and losing, and they have an unusual attitude here. Winning is expected here. Greg Pruitt with a carry. He's to the 30-yard line, just shy of a first down, picks up about four. You know, we're talking about management. The general manager, Mike McCormick, who was the coach last year and brought Knox to Seattle. Congratulations to McCormick. Uh, Seattle appears to be in good hands, as they say. McCormick from above a former coach who knows how to get a team assembled, knows how to be supportive, and then Chuck Knox is man on the field. Seattle uh, has a bright future. A different kind of partnership than Davis has with his coach Flores, but equally effective in this season, at least up to this point. Plunkett scrambling again, and another first down to the 19-yard line. Years, 11 more yards for 35 year old legs. Plunkett seems to have to find his way to the bench to really get him inspired. Of course, that's where he was when he got the call after an injury to Dan Pastorini, took his team to the Super Bowl, big victory over the Philadelphia Eagles. And here he is again, coming back to play with such great effectiveness after Mark Wilson had replaced him in the lineup and then with a shoulder injury said, hey, your turn again. First down. Uh-oh. Who's got it? Seattle. No signal yet. Yes, now it is the Seahawks. Number 77, Jeff Bryant, but a flag is down. I have to let the officials sort it out. Marcus took his eye off that ball momentarily, and Ball bounced on the ground. Several people had a chance at it before the Hawks finally picked it up. And Offense behind the first stop. Merlin, this second half has been a microcosm of the Raiders' season. They have tried to self-destruct at times at a 27-0 lead, and their own mistakes are allowing Seattle hope to stay in the game. They certainly, certainly are. The Seahawks have, have not been able to capitalize on the turnovers today, and we'd indicated before that that has been the secret to their success during this season.
They have the ball at their 25 when we return. 11 minutes, 7 seconds left. Seattle down 27-7, but they've stopped the Raiders from what would have been a touchdown that could have certainly put the game away on the fumble by Marcus Allen. So the turnovers are even four each in this game. They don't look as bright as those on the Raiders' sidelines, do they? And a tough game. Complete. As he goes to his tight end, Charlie Young. Well covered by Matt Millen. Well, if Washington and the Raiders should have a rematch, remember in the regular season, Washington beat the Raiders 37-35, and Raiders had a big lead in the second half. That turnover table will be incredible, the comparisons between the two teams. Hard to believe that the Raiders have been able to sustain the kind of success that they've had when they put the ball on the ground so many times, either through fumbles or, or through interceptions. Second and ten. Zorn, and he was throwing from a crowd of Raiders. John's the intended receiver. The Washington Redskins had that phenomenal record this year of not giving up the ball but taking it away constantly. We'll give you that in a moment. Now that statistic on the turnover table. Washington, an amazing plus 43. The Raiders, a minus 13, a difference of 56 in turnovers. And yet here are two teams going a different way into the Super Bowl. Well, that's with Seattle. Yeah. Dan McElroy denies Seattle hopes. The man who intercepted eight passes during the regular season to earn a trip to the Pro Bowl has his first today. Raiders tip the scale back in their favor slightly. Five turnovers to four today. They're not going to at least go the other direction. A plus one on today's action. Zorn again under pressure. He's been getting heat all day long. You see him bumped by one of his own offensive linemen there just as he released the ball over the head of Harold Jackson, the 16-year veteran, number 29. But uh, doesn't make any difference now. The men in black have it again. All five turnovers, interceptions by that Raider defense. It's 27 to 7. Los Angeles, 10:44 left. 19:75. Bradshaw to Stallworth. Pittsburgh on its way to one of their four Super Bowl championships. But that guy with the beard is huge. Uh, he looks a little out of shape to me. I don't remember him. <laughs> <laughs> David Marish we'll get a chance to hear from Washington's reaction to this game Raiders in front 27-7 have the ball at the 49 of Seattle Kenny King to the 49 Dave Brown made the tackle King has not been used much today a time perhaps for Tom Flores and his staff to begin to consider taking some of their key people out of this game. One of the Raiders, or one of the uh, Seahawks still on the ground after that last play. King's first rush of the game, no yards. Shelton Robinson, who had his two biggest games against the Raiders. He recovered a fumble in the first game with nine yards for a touchdown. Then in the second game when Seattle upset the Raiders here, he had a 12-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Not bad for a linebacker. Not bad at all. List of the Pro Bowl bound players for the Raiders and as is fitting the AFC champion is sending uh, a whole hat full of folks Christensen, Hayes, Hendricks, Lawrence, Long, Martin, McElroy, Pruitt. They've earned the trip. Yeah, the Raiders were the best record in the American Conference 12 and 4. Washington 14 and 2 and you think about that game at at D.C. Stadium, the Raiders ever so close to beating Washington. Had they, both teams would have finished at 13-3, and three, and it appears that'll be the matchup in the Super Bowl. Dick, uh, people watching at home may wonder, uh, as a player, looking at a team you have to play next week, what do you what do you watch? Now, the players 
eyes are really trained and drawn to their specialty on the field. As a defensive tackle, I watch the interior line. I watch the other defensive tackles. As a receiver, you'd be watching defensive backs and watching receivers. You'd be almost thinking your way through those situations, putting yourself into that game, anticipating what you would do, trying to visualize the matchup for next week. You don't really, and I like studying a film where you really try to look for technique or little tips that might help you. You don't, you don't really see those, or maybe you might pick up something. You sometimes pick up the little things like that, but more likely to see them on your own training film. And of course, coming off a game like the Redskins had a, a highly emotional game, a game that went right down to the wire, there's a tremendous drop emotionally. You're so high emotionally for this kind of a game going in. And then to, to be able to pull pull it away in the last seconds with that uh, field goal by Mosley, and Mosley had an interesting day up to then, will leave you drained emotionally. They're, they're about ready to bounce back. You have that real slide, and then you pick back up with a surge of energy. Raiders have dominated 27 to 7. Marcus Allen to the 42-yard line that will leave the Raiders three yards shy of a first down. Joe Norman replacing Sheldon Robinson with the tackle, number 52, from Indiana University. Norman's been out of the lineup, knee problems. Was not dressed last week. And here, back in the ball game because of linebacker injuries. He's not afraid to stick his head in there. And they drop Marcus Allen, who now has 137 yards rushing. Allen had over 100 yards last week against Pittsburgh. Plunkett with a flag down, a sack at his own 47. Greg Gaines on a blitz, the linebacker, got there first. Now we'll check the penalty. Mike Ames, midseason and that after the deadline trade. You know, Seattle and Chuck Knox and San Diego naturally being in the Western Division, they tried to stop the trade, but it materialized. And the Raiders, already strong defensively, pick up an all-pro cornerback in Mike Haynes. Many feel he might be the best at his position. Well, they didn't have a bad man at that position in Ted Watts, but he was perhaps the weakest of those four back there. Now that position may well be their strongest, Dick. 9.24 left in the game, and Ray Guy, as the Seahawks decline the holding penalty. Johns at his five-yard line. Get the feeling that he's going to return it no matter where it is. Oops, he won't return that one. Guy almost missed it completely. Very competitive man, Raven Guy, and he can't believe what he just did. He may have taken his eye off the ball. You see those tight jaws. Great athletes are not very forgiving of their mistakes in a game like this. Let's see if we can pick out what he did wrong. He had to jump for the snap. He knew. <laughs> Boy, did he know. We, we, we talked to Chris Barr about when he knew. If he not Minnesota. Yeah, but he did play with Minnesota. New England. New England, okay. Yeah. New England. Bill Pakel makes the stop. Uh, David Hughes and Mike Davis slow getting up. And that's a critical time for the winning team. They can ill afford to lose a star looking ahead to the Super Bowl. Tampa Bay, boy, that city is really a fire, ready to embrace uh, the championship of professional football. Davis grabbing his stomach, took a shot uh, inside. We saw Harold Jackson a moment ago, 38th birthday last Friday. Coach is saying still like a 22-year-old. I remember him as a rookie. Zach Dixon, woo. Oh, he has run well and runs into Mike Haynes, and Haynes gets a, a little throw from Dixon. We'll see who gets the penalty. No question, but Haynes had a little extra out of bounds, and Dixon didn't like it, threw the ball at him. This may be one of those double personal fouls. Mike Haynes, very professional. I'm a little surprised. He may still be establishing things out there, but you don't really need that kind of play. You just got to look up at that scoreboard. You know how things stand. Watch what happens at the end of the play. It, Zach Dixon driven out of bounds here. Haynes pushes him right there, gives him a little shot. Dixon retaliates. A little silliness on both sides, I think, there. First move foul, unnecessary roughness, 31. Offense, 
Personal, personal foul, foul on the defense. defense. That is the count. Why, why did they bother? A cliche almost in the NFL. Mike Davis, meanwhile, being attended to. He may to. be more seriously injured than we thought. That's George Anderson, the trainer, with his back to us there. And the sweatshirt. 849 left in this championship with the Raiders in front, 27 to 7. They've led all the way. We're ahead 27 to nothing. Zorn and to Largent. Almost a spectacular catch by Steve Largent. 27 7 on the scoreboard. Largent still going up for. Pass from Zorn up there battling for it. The secret is concentration. It doesn't matter what the score is. You still got to give it the best shot you got. Dave Craig now a cheerleader on the sidelines. Man next to him on the right of your screen, Rusty Tillman, special teams coach. We'd like to pass along a bouquet to him. Boy, he's put a, some great marks in the book this year for the special teams of the Seahawks. Ad lib, Zorn to Largent plays, but Largent was well covered. Otis McKinney, an extra defensive back, and meanwhile, Greg Townsend was hounding Zorn. Pressure. All kinds of pressure on the second Raider. Lester Hayes over to the sideline. Lester hobbling a little bit. You said it earlier, the one thing you can't afford is to see your best players, your key people going to the sideline. Looks like Otis McKinney just touched the back of that ball. Margin, excellent concentration, but when that ball is deflected that close to you, it's almost impossible to catch. 8.37 left. Seattle trying to cut into a 20-point Raider lead. Third and 10. Over the middle, complete to Johns. He's wrapped up by McKinney, who's made two good plays back-to-back -back at the 40-yard line. Johns, who has been quiet today, only his second catch. Interesting decision here for Knox, who's going to have a fourth down and about four. He really has no choice. He'll go for it. Lester Hayes is okay. He's back in. Well, they're going to call it not grounding but a sack as Townsend chases Zorn and it appeared Townsend was equally quick afoot. Greg Townsend is going to be difficult to keep out of this starting lineup. 6'3", 240 pounds. Watch the acceleration and the speed. Zorn is not a slow quarterback. In fact, able to run extremely well. Gives him a little grand target in reverse there and Townsend accelerates, has him in the grass. Otherwise, I think that would have been an intentional grounding. Townsend, as you saw, only 21 years of age, the youngest Raider. Zorn is sacked. The Raiders get the ball at the Seattle 36-yard line. The AFC Championship after the 1983 season. Let's go back to 1979, one we'll never forget, Merlin. Dan oh, Passerini to Renfro. Touchdown or not? Well, it was ruled no touchdown at a critical point, and it was Pittsburgh, the AFC champions. And, of course, the Steelers went on to win their fourth Super Bowl and four tries against the Los Angeles Rams over at the Rose Bowl. Maybe we ought to replay that one. <laughs> Got us in trouble, but we called it as we saw. First down for the Raiders at the Seattle 36. Lunkett to Allen. At the 30, a gain of six. Keith Butler made the tackle. See, that was a nice throw. You could just see how he put right in front of Allen so that he got the ball, already had his head going downfield. Soft hands, good turn, good concentration. You still see that mouse under Marcus's eye there that he, where he took the shot early on. 
hard work going on on the sideline. Well, this particular performance by the Los Angeles Raiders has been a work of art today, Dick. Like Lester Hayes there on the sideline. Second down and three. Frank Hawkins, who had a couple of fumble. Hawkins had a couple of touchdowns earlier, first half. Let's see. Well, the Raiders came up with it. Todd Christensen with the ball. And Los Angeles maintains possession. You were talking earlier about Marcus's soft hands, his ability to catch the ball. At practice this week, we said, Marcus, what's ahead for you? He said, you know what? And I'm serious. I would like to do what Charlie Taylor did. I would like to be switched from running back and become a wide receiver. He said, I think I'd live a lot longer. I think I'd be a really fine wide receiver. I think he would, too. Tom Flores now begins to give his offensive players a chance to take a bow, removing a few of them from the game at a time. Wide receivers, Branch and Barnwell have come out. Look at that, 84 yards offense for Seattle. Marcus going to reverse his field. Plunkett throws a block. Allen all the way to the 20-yard line. Make it the 19 before Gregory Johnson can push him out of bounds. Another sensational day for Marcus Allen. Dick, there's some things you can teach. You really can't teach this play. This is Marcus's speed that gets him out of route. Number 16, Bucket throwing a block there on Nash with a little help from Dalby, but that was pure speed making that play possible with great acceleration as Marcus went around that other corner to pick up the first down. Now Marcus Allen, 147 yards rushing today. First down at the 19, 27 to seven. The Raiders lead, six minutes left. Hawkins stopped after a short game. Trying to dress him out there. There's still some good hitting going on in that field. And I'm up here with one of the greats, Hall of Famer Merlin Olsen, and there are a couple from yesterday year in the Oakland Raiders. There's three Hall of Famers. Jim Otto seemed to play every game for 100 years and Blanda for 200. Still got the look of an eagle on those eyes, doesn't he? Well, no, the look of a Raider. Excuse me. <laughs> Two greats down on the sidelines, part of this Raider heritage that has now migrated to Los Angeles. Marcus Allen driving to the 15-yard line, break gains with a tackle. Marcus, by the way, looking forward, I'm sure, now to the matchup next week. He did not play in that Washington game earlier in the year. Certainly that's something that the Redskins have to remember and take into account in their preparation. Well, over 200 yards running and receiving for Allen, and they were criticizing him that he had an off year. All he did was gain 1,000 yards rushing, catch 68 passes. He threw three touchdown passes. And they're acting as if that might have been a fumble. At least Joe Nash came up with a pumpkin. But Allen apparently was down at the time. Trying to steal that football down there. Tackle a the football. Fourth Strip down. It loose. Barr is going to try a field goal that would give the Raiders more than a three touchdown lead. The way the Seahawk offense has been throttled today, that seems like more than enough of a cushion. Well, you know, it was very simple and stated well by you, Merlin. It was stopped Kurt Warner, and the Raiders felt confident they have stopped Warner, and the Raiders obviously have dominated. A whistle, no play. The whistle before the kick. Delay of game, Raiders. We had delay of game before the snap. A couple of those young offensive linemen waiting in the wings, uh, getting a chance to play now. Most bar in for Sylvester, Jordan in for Lawrence. Of course, following the final gun, we'll go down into the winning locker room, get the comments from the winning coach and players. Uh, always a part of the excitement of this event. We always mention Al Davis, and, and at times I think we maybe take away some of the justifiable praise that could, should go to Tom Flores. He is the coach of this team. No question about it. He does an incredible job. Well, Chris Barr going to kick right into prime time here following NBC. Got his third field goal of the game, 35 yards. Knight Ryder couldn't have done it better. Nor could 
Billy Bronco, the Bronco Billy. 30 to 7, the Raiders. Less than four minutes left. Well, I suppose around the National Football League, if you wanted the proper effects on another great season, you'd want the two best teams in the Super Bowl. And by record, it appears that's exactly what's going to happen in Tampa. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Channel 36, WPCQ-TV, Charlotte. Saw Kurt Warner standing alone on the far sidelines. Now Flores will draw a crowd at game's end. Warner has had an incredible year. Who could have projected the kind of success that he would have in this rookie season? The kind of success Chuck Knox would have in this rookie season. There, there's some real sadness right now on the sideline. And you understand that quote if you're a coach. You never get over it. That came last week after Shula was beaten by Knox and Seahawks. Well, it is such a letdown because you're thinking Super Bowl and the playoffs, and then what do you do when it's all over? It's hard to, to accept. Out of bounds. You spend your time preparing yourself so positively, mentally. Knox and his Seahawks, even knowing they were outmanned, came here to win. They came here very full of confidence that they could do the job. They have not been able to do it today, in part because of the fact that they have had some problems, but mostly because of the great play by this team, the Raiders. You give the Raiders credit. They have, they have chopped their victory out of, of rough and aggressive play. Here's a little fun bunch. Christensen, Branch, Barnwell, the three top targets for a plug -in. What's the finale to this dance? I wonder how long it takes. <laughs> Apparently more verbal than physical. I kind of like the way the fun one celebrates myself. 3.53 remaining. There'll be a lot of celebration tonight here in Los Angeles, in Washington, and then two weeks to talk about what happens down in Tampa. Chris Barr to kick it off. Dixon and Hughes are deep. Dixon at the seven. And his kickoff returns have been one of the many highlights for the Seahawks this year. He's out to the 28 as Mark Wilson begins the tune-up. I want to ask you, Merlin, you were in the final championship game one step from the Super Bowl and never made it. How long did it take you before you really got your head and your, your act back together, before you recognized, wow, the season's over and it didn't all come down to what I wanted? I think the first few times that we dropped out of sight just before the Super Bowl were the toughest stick, but it sometimes would take me two weeks to a month and it doesn't have help to have all those people saying, hey, what went wrong with you? What happened? Zorn. Now this curveball broke a little low, bounced it in there. Paul Johns was close to Seahawk. Dick, as we look at the Seahawks and look at Zorn, there's no way you can take away from them what they have accomplished in this season. And I think that's something that's important to think about. Indeed, Plunkett will lead the Raiders on to the Super Bowl, but the Seahawks have arrived. They've been here for the first time. They made their mark. They made believers out of a lot of folks down there in Miami. They, they didn't make it this day. And I think they will be back. They'll be back here again, knocking at the door. Seahawks have completed only nine passes today. Zorn makes a 10 to Dornick. As he throws underneath short of the first down at the 36-yard line. And in fact, Merlin, had the Raiders lost today, it would have been disastrous as it was last year when they were defeated on this field by the Jets. Whereas Seattle with a loss, they can go back. It won't be that easy. But overall, it's been such a surprisingly good year. Positive year for the Seahawks. Nine and seven. They've won two playoff games. They've won four in a row. And you know how those fans up in Seattle are going to welcome them back. They've been so supportive all year. And in defeat, they'll be the same as they continue with a hurry-up offense. Darnick. There's another thought. That is that... We always remember the last game of the year, and certainly, as fans, we're conscious of who lost 
that Super Bowl game more than who lost out in this championship game. There are some coaches who'll say, hey, if you're going to lose, lose the week before the Super Bowl. Don't be the loser in the Super Bowl. Only 1 of 28 ends the season on a true winning note. That's kind of sad in a way. The other 27 are losers, even the team that goes to the Super Bowl and does not prevail. Well, there were 24 teams watching on television today wishing they could have been in one of these two games. Soren to Dornick. Of course, each of these plays successful, but also heating up the clock, and that's the Raiders' thought as we're down to the two-minute warning. Two minutes left. 30-7 to seven Raiders. Well, it was the Raiders in 1980, and the comeback player was Jim Plunkett, and he threw to Raymond Chester very early in the game at San Diego, as you'll recall, and Chester, on one of those ricochet plays, broke loose for a touchdown, 65 yards, and the wild card Raiders went on to the Super Bowl. Here's the play. The Raiders, the only team, has a wild card to win four games, and then after this play to the Super Bowl, beat the Eagles. And just as Chester gallops home, we're going to take you to this fantastic finish. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes. January 10th, 1982, San Francisco trails Dallas 27 to 21. Right to meet the mighty Bengals in Super Bowl 16. Marcus Allen, rushing and receiving 216 yards. Seattle, total 130. Total Raiders 403. The Raiders are on their way to the Super Bowl. Now the message board spelling out Super Bowl bound. And the players and their fans celebrate here at the Coliseum. cosmetically trying to change the score again underneath the Dornick and that play works again for yardage as the Raiders will give that short gainer just to let the clock chew away McKinney made the tackle and somebody knew they were 37 35 in the regular season at Kennedy Stadium and Marcus Allen did not play in that game flag down complete the Larson at the five-yard line, he is hammered. Now let's check the penalty. I believe we've got a holding call out there that will march it back. What do you think about the matchup, Raiders and Redskins? Two power teams, physical football teams. That, that's the name of the game, <laughs> big teams. They, and they, they're a lot alike in the way they play their football. Some subtle differences. Riggins, of course, the, the running attack, basically, of the Redskins, along with the, the quickness of Washington. Here they use Marcus Allen outside, Hawkins inside. But both teams will take the ball deep. Both have quarterbacks that can do it defensively. Two great defenses. I, that's, you know, good matchups in terms of pressure, good matchups in terms of, of balance on both sides. I, I think it's a great game. You know, it reminds me of the Dallas-Pittsburgh matchup a few years ago at the Orange Bowl. Two great teams. 120 left. Complete to Johns. Finally bumped out of bounds at about the nine-yard line. Will it be first? Well, no, it will not be a first down. They had first and 20. It'll bring up second down and uh, about seven. Rod Martin, a man that really has been so quiet in terms of publicity, but finally honored this year his first Pro Bowl and voted by UPI as the AFC Defensive Player of the Year. Lawrence Taylor of the Giants, the Come NFC on. honoree. Rod Martin, what a nice man. He got one of the great smiles in football. He certainly does. You know, it's, I think the people who fought the hard way to get here enjoy it the most. He certainly qualifies there. Complete touchdown to Charlie Young. Young, who will not continue that string of Super Bowl every other year. 79, he was with the Rams. They went to the Super Bowl, lost to Pittsburgh. Two years later, he was with the San Francisco 49ers. They won the Super Bowl over Cincinnati. And now with Seattle, he hoped to make it three for three. Jeff Barnes, 56, gives him a good chuck. But that's not as important as what Jim Zorn gives him. Hands him the football. Zorn, left-hander delivers, and he knows. 
Norm Johnson with a point after. And it is 30 to 14, Raiders. You look down at the Raiders sideline and, and you sense the pleasure there. And you sense the excitement there, but this is an interesting team. They don't do a lot of celebrating after a victory until the big one, the Super Bowl. It's almost business as usual. They'll go back in the dressing room, put their clothes on, and go home. They'll be smiling and happy, but they know that the work's not finished until, until you finish it up right in the Super Bowl. And while this is our finale, I want to thank especially Ted Nathanson, Larry Cirillo, who have directed and produced most of the games of we have worked Merlin Olsen and you talk about artists and uh, great talents in this business well we want to thank those two gentlemen especially for their great work the onside kick covered easily by David Hum the backup quarterback from for the Raiders Hum from Nebraska he was signed at mid-year when Mark Wilson went down <laughs> the Hummer, look at that smile. I'll be kidding him about that uh, big uh, play. Well, I tell you, he showed some good hands on that play. Maybe, maybe better check him in, take a receiver out of him. Todd's over to say, hey, good job. New quarterback, I believe Mark Wilson, is going to run the ship the rest of the way. Jim Plunkett will celebrate. Look at the sidelines for the Raiders. They're hugging each other. Something very special about sports. Big men shy away from that sort of thing, even with their relatives and right out in the open and bracing, showing the affection one has for a teammate. Big victory. There is a special camaraderie between the active players of the NFL, between the teammates on that sideline that is difficult to find anywhere else. What they go through together, what they share together, the feelings they have about their coaches, their teammates, very, very special. And there, things change. The minute you walk out, of that relationship as an active player they still like you and you're a buddy but you never again have that very special one-on-one -on -one relationship well the season comes to an end for seattle what thrills they brought their fans and for the raiders they expected to go to the Super Bowl all year long. Now, something about knowing you're good, not hoping you're good, but knowing you're good, whether it's an individual or a team. And quality has prevailed. They'll get their chance. You find two teams with that kind of winner's confidence. Tee it up. <laughs> They'll be ready. It was 20 to nothing at the half. Raiders had it fairly well tucked in their back pocket. Seattle matched the Raiders touchdown in the third quarter and now 30 to 14 approaching the final gun Hawkins to the 44 yard line I want to thank the cord the Costanza understands our statistician Tim Coleman Shep Goldberg Dennis Mission Andy Apodaca Phil Olson the support today Randolini kind of hate to see the season end don't you I do too such an enjoyable year. A kind of a crazy year, though, Dick. It wasn't the surprise finalists, though, in the Super Bowl. Washington and Raiders, they were favored a long time ago after some of the early favorites fell in September. These were the two clubs. That, and Tom Flores, we haven't talked a lot about him. We've been talking about Knox and the job he did. Flores very quietly, the ice man from Sanger, California. And his team is going back, his record, now 7-1 and one in the playoffs. Knox's streak against the Raiders ends. His numbers in the Coliseum drop a bit. As we said, their trip home will be full of memories of a good season, even though this game will not go in their book of happiest moments. Now, delay of the game, this will be the final play. NFL 83 will take you right into the locker room where the Raiders get their comments. Mark Wilson sits on it, and the Los Angeles Raiders pack their bags and head to Tampa. Congratulations to the Redskins and the Raiders, champions of the National and American Conferences in 1983.
to 14, the final. Before the largest crowd to ever see a championship of the American Football Conference at the Coliseum, where we will return in just a moment. Well, it was a game much like the one last week. Lester Hayes applied the flame to the fuse, and his interception early got the Raiders off 3 0, and then they powered to a 20 0 halftime lead, and then it was academic 30 14, the final score, as the Raiders the American Football Conference champions have earned the right to the Washington Redskins in the Super Bowl. And we'll be back with Len Berman for more post-game activities right after these words from your local station. A promotion. Back at the L.A. Coliseum, one of the goalposts has come down. The other one is safe for now as the L.A. Raiders and the L.A. fans head to the Super Bowl. Of course, the Raiders have been there as the Oakland Raiders now for the first time in their second year playing in Los Angeles. The L.A. Raiders head to the Super Bowl to play the Washington Redskins. Who should be favored in this game? After all, the Redskins are the defending champs, look awfully tough, had a scare today. The Raiders playing nearly the perfect game. Who should be the favorite in the Super Bowl? The early line is just out. The Washington Redskins are favored by three and a half points. A year ago, the Miami Dolphins were the three-point favorites when the Redskins won Super Bowl 17. So that's the matchup. We have a lot to tell you about on our post-game report. Locker room interviews, highlights. He got his pick right today. We have a lot to talk about. We'll return to the L.A. Coliseum in just a minute. And back at the L.A. Coliseum, the exuberant crowd here as the Raiders are heading to Super Bowl 18 in Tampa, Florida. Standing by now in the Raider locker room is our Ahmad Rashad with Raiders coach Tom Flores. Let's send it downstairs for now. Coach played like true champions. you got to be proud of this football I'm, team. I am so proud, I tell you. you know, it's, it's a great feeling. This is what you dream about. And our guys were really up this week. We had a great week of practice. And uh, it was a championship game, and they played... They played great. Tom. I'm proud. Merlin Olsen mentioned during the course of the game that you guys were so businesslike during the course of the season, and then you really came on emotionally the last two weeks. Well, we did. You know, the, the biggest, the hardest thing nowadays is to qualify for this playoffs. And once you get in the playoffs, it's a different ball game. It's a whole new season, and then you just, it's one game at a time. And, and we prepared that way. We never looked beyond anybody that we were preparing for. And people kept asking, who would you want to play? I said, I don't care who it is as long as we're one of the teams playing. All right, how do you assess this football team as opposed to the team that won the Super Bowl the last time? I think that there's a lot of similarities. Uh, number one, uh, Jim Plunkett, the way he came back for us this year, the way he's performed. Uh, our defense is playing super at this at this stage. Uh, we're a little, we're a little, our pass rush is better than it was in, in 80, but uh, I tell you, there's a lot of similarities. This, this team is a tough team. It, it overcomes anything you put in front of it. I know you're happy about the win today, but what about the Washington Redskins? They're awesome. They're awesome, but uh, uh, I guess we look pretty good today, too. So I tell you, we had a great game with them early in the season, and, and I look forward to playing the Redskins because uh, we like to play good teams. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach, right. and congratulations.